Hey everybody and welcome to a very special presentation of Raw Dogs. This episode was released to our Patreon members many moons ago, um, but today it is arriving on the main feed as a special treat to you, partially because I was a little hungover the other day and partially because we recorded another special episode just for our Patreon members. This is the God of War Ragnarok episode. This features my friend Ben, you might have heard him before on our Mortal Kombat episode or way back in the day when we did the top 10 PS4 soundtracks. But if you want access to our Patreon episodes early, which features, we have a Castlevania Symphony of the Night one, we have part twos of Final Fantasy IX, Persona 5, our infamous The Lore of McDonald's, as well as tons of exclusive uh, popcorn dogs are available on there as well. So we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you uh, check it out. There's free trials available too. Um, you'll get Elden Dogs, our Elden Ring podcast, much uh, much further in advance as well. But yeah, if you're you're curious, check it out. Uh, this is Raw Dogs, and we're part of the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network. Thanks for checking us out. We're professionals. We don't even need to do any warm ups. No. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Raw Dogs, uh, your favorite podcast about beer and video games, and Norse gods mm. and dead dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! But yeah. Oh, all right. Spoiler oh, yeah. warning. Whoops. <laughs> Almost just spoiler warning. Yeah. Coming in Brock. hot. Coming in hot. Really? Uh, don't fall in love with Lunda. Yes. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> My name but is. You might. Yeah. But you might when you know the voice actress. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Sorry. We'll take, we'll go ahead. Continue. Your intro. Um, Sorry. My name is Brad, and I'm very excited to be back in Midgard. 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 Mm-hmm. Who else is here today? My name is Tyler, and I've been very excited to talk about this game since about 48 hours after I purchased it, because that's about when I beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Which Damn, was two days? Two days after it came out. No, it was like a week. I'm, okay. All right. I'm over-exaggerating. <laughs> no, this has been a long time coming. Okay, yeah. Hi, I'm Ben. I uh, Ben, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Yes, I, I'm like my, my third or fourth time on this show? Third, yeah. third? I believe, because you were here for top 10 PS4 soundtracks, which yep. we did very early in the PS4 life cycle, <laughs> <laughs> but we were going for it, and then mm-hmm. you were here for the Mario, or no, Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, that's right. Yeah. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, because we, we talked about the old movie, and then we watched the new one. <laughs> <laughs> the which, HBO one? Which I've surprisingly forgotten quite a bit of. Yeah, I... Yeah, me too. <laughs> I remember just him saying, get over here. That's it. And everyone's, that's, like, that's everyone's, everyone's like, yeah, 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 that's it. That's what he says, dude. That's what he do. That's what he... Holy shit. So I have a special beer for okay. today. All right. Very excited. What the hell is that? What is this? Oh, no. Odin is my overlord. <laughs> what? Drecker? So from it Drecker like, Brewing, almost um, sounds like Drecky. Yes, it. If uh, Odin wasn't so obviously the master, I went looking for Loki as my homeboy from them, but instead I found Odin as my overlord, and I guess it this was meant to fitting. be. This is still good. So it's a lactose double IPA from Drecker, and just a heads up: Odin is the best part of this entire game, in my opinion. I uh, I agree with you. I was so incredibly and pleasantly surprised at the voice actor and his entire like his his look his feel everything about him very uh soft spoken like the way he's just like real quiet and gentle seeming yeah uh master masterfully played masterfully written i i did enjoy odin quite a bit made out to be a true villain that's for sure like it's just like that villain you kind of want to cheer for a little bit because he's i don't know he's so small (laughs) Dude, he's good at, uh, he's really good at making you like him throughout the entire game, yeah. and you know he's going to fuck you over at yeah, some point, but absolutely. you're like, you're so fucking charming. There's yeah, a million billboards good. saying, don't trust him, and you yeah, meet no. the guy, and you're like, I don't oh, know, man, he's pretty good. He's pretty cool. Yeah. Not yeah. so bad. He doesn't yell at me like my father. Heimdall, shut up. Oh, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get it, man. This guy gets it. Yeah, I really liked his performance <laughs> in Ballers, the HBO series starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, oh. also, the, I liked how he defended Kevin Spacey as the lawyer in Seven. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Ooh, look at okay. Yeah. Wow. I, I, was on, I was on IMDb. I, <laughs> yeah. I just got to pull this out somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so God of War Ragnarok is our topic today. Uh, direct sequel to God of War 2018. Mm-hmm. 
and I put down the ninth or 11th-ish in the series. Go back to our old God of War episode we did at some point. The problem is, the couple mobile games, do you count them? Oh, mobile games. But yes, Kratos is still around, and after God of War 2018, people were fucking ready. Jesus Christ. I, I remember just them announcing God of War 2018, and you just see, like, boy, I am hungry. And everyone's like, oh, shit! <laughs> like, freaking, he just says that one line. You barely even know it's Kratos. <laughs> I remember uh, PlayStation 4, after I beat God of War 2018, I put the theme of him and Atreus sitting in the boat, mm-hmm. and there's a little inscription on the, the building that says, like, Ragnarok is coming, that you had to translate Ooh. that people saw. In the runes. So, yeah, so I was like, wait a minute, are they do they gotta do a sequel? You mean the, the thing that they hinted at the entire game? Yeah, yeah I was, I was like, like they talked about Ragnarok and Fibble Winter the entire game, and they kept talking <laughs> about how Odin's the bad guy the entire game. I know, I was so psyched when I when I saw it on the little theme. Plus, it makes me miss the PlayStation 4 theme. The PlayStation 5 mm. theme, it can't change it. Yeah. You can't, um, it's whatever game you're highlighted on. But yeah. when you look back in God of War 2018 and you're fighting some dudes named Magni and Modi, you're like there must be, like, they're, they're saving the big Norse gods. You're, you're sitting there and you know that. Like, yeah, for sure. You don't even see Thor show up until, you know, very the, much. The very the cut scene, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people didn't even get that because once the game was done, they were like, all right, on all right, to cool. the next one. Because you have to return home to yeah. get that cut scene. There's a fair amount in this game as well that they you have to go afterwards. But, mm-hmm. uh, yes, Kratos and Atreus still reside in ancient Scandinavia and they deal with more dickhead gods and <laughs> axe-throwing mayhem. Uh, This was developed by Santa Monica Studios, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Uh, Cody Barlog did not return to direct this game, Mm. which uh, Christopher Judge was very upset about at first. He's like, I'm not Kratos for anyone but Cody Barlog. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. And naturally, everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Here's more money. (laughs) Please. Please stay on. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Boy. Oh, I do have a glass. Money. (laughs) Money. I don't need a snack. I need a 50. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Directed by Eric Williams. Fun fact, Eric Williams has been involved on every God of War game since the original. Yeah. Uh, he designed the combat system and, yeah, uh, almost his entire workography for his uh, working career is God of War. I looked at it. It's almost across the board. So if someone has spent time with Kratos. It's that guy. I mean, I think they mentioned that you guys watched that uh, documentary thing on YouTube the raising Kratos thing. Did you guys watch that? No, I meant to go back and watch it, yeah. and I this was fell off before Ragnarok. Ragnarok right? Yeah, before Ragnarok. Yes, yeah, this yeah. is when they're making the 2018 one. Yeah, yeah. But I remember they mentioned that guy too, and how he's like, "Yeah, we were back there, and we were trying to make something new because everyone was kind of getting bored. Like once Resurrection came out, everyone's like, yeah, Resurrection, yeah. And once Resurrection came out, everyone was kind of burnt out from it and didn't want to do the hack and slash. He wanted something better with more was sustenance. It, was it Ascension? Ascension. That's it. Ascension. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, there's there's so many. Uh, once once you abandon numbers, you have abandoned <laughs> us understanding <laughs> what's going on in the series a right, little yeah. bit. Um, Cody Barlog though was involved everywhere. Uh, it's kind of just a tradition that God of War. There's a different director every game, so mm. I appreciate him stepping down. Artist Rafael Grizzetti, check out his Instagram if you don't. He's always just making dope ass versions of Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles on Instagram. He's just a 3D modeler who just does stuff for fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, writers Matt Sophos, Richard Zengrande, Gobert, Galbert, Gobert, and composer Bear McCreary returning as well. Um, Tyler, you're pretty excited waiting for this game, weren't you? I pre ordered it. Yeah, I haven't pre-ordered a game in a well outside of Elden Ring in a Red, long time. Uh, last, the Last of Us Part Two, I pre-ordered. It's only like those flagship like games that I really consider some of my favorites. Like 2018 God of War is one of my favorite games, so obviously I was going to get the sequel. Same thing with The yeah. Last of Us. Yeah. I was very psyched for this. I did not watch any trailers. I went in completely blind, and I have a lot of opinions, and I'm very conflicted. Overall, I love the game, mm-hmm. but. I do have some. I have some beef with it. There was a couple questions that I had too. But yeah, we'll get into that too. I mean, but yeah, I mean, I pre-ordered it as well. I like. I only pre-ordered things that I like as well. I mean, like Diablo Four. I pre-ordered that because I've been playing the shit out of the other ones. So, are, are you doing uh, advanced? Is it like playing that already? Diablo. 4 I didn't do the. It? I'm not doing the beta stuff. I don't have time. Okay. Uh, I got two kids. <laughs> they just like. 
cry, cry, cry. I love you so much. It, it's it's amazing. As soon as you had kids, you got that like face tattoo. Yeah, it's and, weird. And now you carry an axe around the house yeah. all the time. And I, <laughs> luckily we had one boy, so I just call him boy all the time. Do you? No. <laughs> no, no. Boy. I, sometimes I do bust it out when he's just, because he doesn't know. You're three. Here's your first bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah. You are not ready. <laughs> he can't put the blocks in the right holes. You're like, do better. <laughs> That's it. Mother used to show me this all the time. Well, she's not around anymore, and my wife's just like, I'm right here. <laughs> Man. <laughs> but, um, so uh, do you have a lot of experience with the God of War games before 2018? Yes. The only one I haven't played was Ascension. Okay. It's the only one I haven't played. I Even, play, well, I guess I didn't play the mobile games either. But oh, fuck those. I, but I did play, like, the PSP games and uh, 1, 2, and 3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you, you have more experience than most people, I would say. Oh, ah, really? Yeah. I mean, I played uh, 1 through 3 plus Ascension, but, like, those PSP ones, you had to be there, right? <laughs> yeah, PSP. R.I.P. to the PSP. R.I.P. PSP. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really have my, my friend to thank to get me into this game because he actually gave me a copy of God of War, uh, the first one. He's like, dude, you got to try this game. And like I for a year, I suck at video games. And when I say I suck at video games, I mean, like I suck at playing video games and being consistent with video games. So he like told me this. And then like two years later, I finally played it. And I was like, this is the best game ever. And luckily, it was right around the time God of War 3 was coming out. So then he was like, you son of a bitch. I had to wait so long for God of War yeah. 3. And you just played 1 and 2 and all of a sudden 3 comes out. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I just knew what was going to happen. But sometimes things work out the mm. way they were supposed to, right? Mm. Uh, God of War 2018 did, did a whole bunch for Kratos as a character. Yeah. Because honestly, I don't think I don't know if people missed Kratos too much. I felt like that Kratos was pretty tired, and we get it. You're angry. <laughs> we get so angry. it. It's, it's, a, it's a good shtick for a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when Kratos does emerge in 2018, is uh, I just wanted to live a quiet life, and he has to go to his chest and like get his gun out of there. And he's like, I said I wouldn't do this anymore. <laughs> it's like John. Wick, it's like John Wick, John John Wick getting, getting out the blades go. of chaos a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, God of War 2018 was a, a weirdly special game, very defining for the PS4, and a reinvention. I think moving Kratos into Norse mythology was a very wise decision. God of War 2018 I was fucking high on. I was very high in that game, and Ragnarok I was juicing for. Yeah, I was in the same boat. I was really high on 2018. I liked how long it was. Like It, it felt like it just kept going and going and going. And the story didn't get repetitive. I was all about it. And then I think it's because I like the Last of Us game so much that I see a lot of Last of Us DNA. Oh, you mean where you don't play stuff and you watch really well-made cutscenes? Yeah, Mm -hmm. that and the companion (laughs) system. Like Atreus is basically Ellie. Yeah, okay. Fetching stuff for you and helping you kill enemies. I'm I'm just There's a lot of boosting both of them up to high places. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, one thing that's stupid about God of War games... Uh, Brad's first gripe. Uh, here he is, you know, he's climbing fucking giant gods and uh, he's doing the most over the top crazy shit. One person puts like a little skateboard blocker up on a rail. He's like, I can't climb it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I've seen you jump like, over mountains, man. <laughs> like, just hop up there, dog. Get up, man. I can't do it. <laughs> just, it's clearly impossible. They My knees hurt. <laughs> if someone put a rail on those gods and, and, and titans that I killed in the earlier games, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it either. Did you see any skateboard blockers there? <laughs> Atreus, go to your room. It. It's the same as your room. <laughs> yeah, I'll shut up. It's <laughs> our room. Go to your corner. <laughs> no talking with Mimir. It's like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, no, no television is that's no it. talking oh, with Mimir. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's yeah. good. <laughs> I will not try any Mimir accents on this episode. It's It's... I've tried it. It doesn't sound good. I'm not doing it. I wouldn't be able to. I learned some surprising things about Mimir while doing research. But a little bit about development. Um, A sequel was teased at the end of the game. I mean, just showing Thor showing up. Right. We know what's coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, April 2019, uh, the teaser that you mentioned, Tyler, the PS4 dynamic background theme. At the same time, in order to celebrate the first anniversary of the previous game's release, Barlog posted a thread of tweets Um, With pictures and a statement concerning the development process, some fans noticed the letters of each tweet spelled out, Ragnarok is coming. Ooh. Yes. Conspiracy theorists. There you go. (laughs) Uh, 
September 16th during the PS5 2020 showcase, a sequel was officially announced for the for a 2021 release. And February 2021, uh, no updates for a period of time. Led Cody Barlog to tweet that the game will be out when it's done. Always the right move. Mm. Yeah. Um, there were delays, though. Uh, the pandemic. Uh, I didn't cover the history of the pandemic in my outline. I figured we'd know it. Yeah, yeah we get yeah. it. We, it's COVID. We were there. Yeah. Shit was tough. It was very tough. Yeah. I don't know how it was in ancient Scandinavia, uh, but it made problems getting access to talent. Mm -hmm. uh, this was also unique in that Sonny Sul Suljic, mm -hmm. probably butchering the boy's name, uh, Atreus, he was going through puberty pretty heavily during this time. Oh, yeah, I guess. Kind of a jump. Voice was changing a bunch, so the dialogue designers said that they had to go in and even out a bunch of his audio, and they re-recorded re some things because... I didn't realize starting this game up, I'm like, oh, Atreus is just Atreus. And then you like see during the game, they show like flashbacks to little boy Atreus. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, he was a little pipsqueak back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's quite a bit older in this one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He's old enough to regret, like have shame and regret about things he's done, which is a really traumatic <laughs> period yeah. of your life when you're like, oh, God, did I really say that? That whole scene, it was just yeah. him saying stupid stuff at like right, middle yeah. school dances. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> um, June 2021, the game would be delayed. Uh, announced it was delayed until 2022 to ensure the game was ready. And uh, on June 20, and June as well of that year, uh, was confirmed the game would be released for both the PS4 and 5. I think a bad move, but an mm. understandable move. Right. I like next gen games. To be exclusively on the next gen. When you're having to hinder what you can do to stay in the last one. Right. And at that at that point, without the shipping issues for the PlayStation Five, that should have been a kind of a no brainer. On like a normal like life cycle of a new console, at that period, games are going to start being exclusive. So, I know that the shortage of PlayStation Fives contributed to a lot of games being right. yeah. previous and next gen. And I was also bummed because I really wanted some new animations and some really really updated graphics on my new PlayStation Five. Yeah, do you play this four or five? Uh, I play five. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think the only thing that really struck it, struck to me being a, a PS4 game as well was every time Kratos crawled through a crack to load a new area. Yeah. When you do like the sidestep mm -hmm. and you just, oh, okay. Or there's a long hallway where nothing's happening. Yeah. Like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> At least there's clever dialogue. Right, yeah. Right? In there. Uh, September 2021. People were getting pretty angry and tweeting, and Christopher Judge, Kratos, motherfucker, you don't mess with this guy. No. Uh, he tweets out that a lot of the delay was caused by him requiring surgery. Uh, he wasn't going to be able to go in there and do the the acting, because I think it was back surgery. I forget what it was. Okay, yeah. And Santa Monica said, nope. We'll delay it. We want Kratos to be in tip-top shape. Yeah. I saw people tweeting, like, you don't need to stand up to voice act. And it's like, like have were... you seen the man perform? Right. Oh well, and they're doing the body into it. Well, yeah, they're, exactly. they're, it's not even just that. They're doing the full, like, motion capture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Him and uh, Sonny. Sonny. Yeah. It was great watching the Raising Kratos because mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Judge, I think, uh, he he maybe talks a little too adult with Sonny. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> there was like one scene where like Sonny's about to voice act. He's like, "What you think you're motherfucking big now? <laughs> <laughs> Save awesome. your money, dog." That's what he said. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and because there, you know, there are scenes where he has to just like stand up to the dude who, Kratos, who's just looming over him and just talk right. shit at him. Yeah, God. And you have to act like you're good at good at doing that because there's no way that kid was actually good at doing that. No one is. <laughs> um, yep, uh, Ju July 6, 2022, a new cinematic trailer unveiled, the con uh, unveiled, confirming the November 9th release date. It arrived November 9th for the PS4, PS5, making it the first cross-gen entry in the series. Upgrading between consoles cost $10, sold 5.1 million units in its first week, mm -hmm. becoming the fastest-selling first-party game in PlayStation history. I drove all the way to Menominee Falls to pick it up because all the Best Buys, I was using rewards points, all the Best Buys were like out of stock. So they. But you pre ordered. 
Yeah, I pre-ordered, and then they were like, you got to go pick it up over here. And I was really mad because I was going to pick it up at like 11 in the morning and download it, go to work, come home and play. Right. I had to wait till I got home from work and drove to Menominee Falls during rush hour. So I was a very cranky boy that day. Absolutely. Yeah. I can, I mean, when they, the, the negatives like an always online, which is what, you know, like Suicide Squad is going to be going through. Uh, I wish that with, um, physical releases there's just such a benefit of down, like getting it digital because you can just download it pre-download it half the time and then it just clicks on the moment it's available instead of Tyler's stuff and you're talking about like oh then I'll just download it and then I'll go to work and then it'll be ready to fucking play by the time I come home because you got to update everything I yeah. wish the only upside for like that always online is they could sell you physical copies early and then you that would also people would break the shit out of that but yeah I just want to be able to get a physical game the same time those digital people. <laughs> I do much prefer the physical game now because I, I have so many games digital. And I, there's a lot that I have digital that I wish I got physical. And I am so glad that I got a physical copy of this game. And yeah. I'm sure you are glad that I got a physical copy as well. Because I, I, can't, I can't afford to buy every $60, Jeez, there's my $60 game. <laughs> games. Uh, it's Elden Ring in there, so don't take that home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was. That's another one I should have bought physical. I got a digital. I own two physical copies of Elden Ring. I own two digital copies. That's because I played. Fi- <laughs> <laughs> well, I own the PlayStation Four and PlayStation oh, Five okay. digital copy. Right. Technically, fair, ah. fair enough. Because I paid the seventy dollars when I had a PlayStation Four yeah. for both copies. Because I knew what was on my horizons. There, I was <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be a schlub for forever. Well, I played Fifty Cent Blood in the Sand for an hour, and that's how I got a second copy of Elden Ring. We both got a from software game that night because I got Dark, Dark Souls remastered. It was, like uh, Bugsy, it was a video game fundraiser event, and you had to pick a, a random like shitty game from a pile and play it for an <laughs> hour, and then you could pick one of the games. Yeah, I fucking got the only good game in the pile. I got Fifty <laughs> yeah. Cent Blood in the Sand. It was amazing. And he sat right next to me while I was playing, and I was playing some Bubsy Bubsy game, and it was fucking <laughs> terrible. And I hated it. Fifty Cent released two third person shooters in the vein of uh, Gears of War. If you didn't know, oh okay, that's good. <laughs> They're actually okay. Yeah, Tony A was like, "Yo, Fifty, break these crates to find stuff inside." <laughs> what are you? I was get like, out, "This dialogue out. is groundbreaking." <laughs> <laughs> no Eminem though. No, super disappointed that there's no Slim Shady in those games. Damn. Yeah, I don't know what, why not? You think it would make sense, but yeah, just sign up. What's going on, Slim? Makes sense. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm being dumb. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, some of the specs: uh, this game is 4K at 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. In the PS5, you can get high frame resolution mode, high frame performance mode. Um, 3D audio, haptic feedback, and yada, yada, yada. We're about to get into the meat and potatoes for the game. I'm excited. Before we get there, I did want to do a shout out to the accessibility options. Uh, Did you guys, when you started this, there's like the quick start, just fucking put me in the game mode, or there is... Uh, check out all of the accessibility options, which I knew that I wouldn't need, but I wanted to look through. Yeah, that's what I did. I, like, I think you got to look through them because I have an HDR and I had to calibrate it. Oh, not even that. This is like uh, for people that have uh, various maybe issues reading or like seeing things on the screen, mm-hmm. audio cues. There is like 90 or 70 different options to make the game Holy more playable shit. for different, uh, I don't want to say deficiencies, uh, different ability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. I actually did go in there and I, I tried tweaking the audio cues in the battles, but it wound up being a little too um, intrusive. It's more for people that like really need it. Uh, okay. Otherwise, it kind of it definitely affects the way the screen looks. But you can like change the size of text even because some people are unable to read like the smaller text. Sure, or you can like cool. yeah, it's yeah. just a really nice thing. Did right. they have that uh, high contrast mode? Where in certain scenes your character will be like alpha blue against a green background sort yeah. of thing. Hogwarts had that, and Devin, my roommate, accidentally turned it on and thought the game was bugged. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna like restart and everything. Was and we he, were all sitting around stoned? like, was he stoned? Maybe, <laughs> dude. I don't know, man. I just got home from Vanguard when it happened, so I was not sober. I was <laughs> like, man, what'd you do, man? This game's bugged. <laughs> Fuck, I just bought it. <laughs> It's a contrast thing. I don't know with man. Yeah, still we figured it. Still out. like it. Yeah, <laughs> I still like the game. But. I'm mostly I'm mostly going to those settings because I have a, a problem with uh, motion sickness. 
Okay. Luckily, like God of War, both God of Wars, I haven't been able to change much, or I haven't had to change much, I should say. But yeah, that's why I go into those settings too. And then, thankfully, it's I'm just gonna throw my little one out there, even though like the color blindness and and and, and other things are probably more. But, uh, but no, yeah. it's it's important across the board, and it's just nice that games are offering these things. Yeah, now. for sure, for sure. One thing that I activated out of laziness was automatically pick up all of like the loot that drops. <laughs> so Kratos just runs up and just like, poof, 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 poof. so I don't have to like click. That's an accessibility this. thing. Well, it's available in one of the accessibility <laughs> menus. Yeah. Man, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. Yeah. It was nice, other than <laughs> sometimes... Like, and it, you don't pick up things you don't need. It's the biggest advantage because, like, if I'm full on rage, it doesn't pick that up. Okay. Full on health. And then you come back there way later, and it's still sitting yeah, there. Those still, is, yeah, those are chilling. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a nice thing. It's cool. Sometimes you go back there to fight a berserker. Well, yeah. sometimes a I... A thousand s- times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes God. I save those, though. Like, I don't pick them up all the time. So if you're you're saying if you have, like, one hit out of your health, it'll just pick up that health and use it? Yeah. Oh, but oh. usually I'm either rolling full health or in the middle of a battle. Uh, I, I, I don't know. There's not a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. We'll see. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think I played on normal mode. I, I it's too. usually where I start. I, I will admit I did change it to give me story for two fights. Which fights? Na and... Gna. Gna, sorry, Gna and... How dare you mispronounce weird sorry. old Scandinavian Norse <laughs> words. Gna <laughs> and, uh, and King Rolf. King Rolf? King, yeah. Yeah. That one's right. I was I, watching a completionist video, and he called Burger Burger. <laughs> and I'm I like, call it Burger I'm too. like, that's good, dude. Burger's yeah. still a good name. Yeah. <laughs> this is my buddy, French Fry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah, most of the story I did uh, on balance. So I should I should have changed it down to give me story for Gana and King Rolf. Maybe so, they I'm, were so it was so frustrating with Gana. Gana was worse than Rolf. Yeah, Rolf was frustrating. Yeah, uh, he wasn't the worst berserker for me though. Oh really? Yeah, I forget. There was two difficult Berserker fights. We'll talk about that. Okay, sure. We'll talk about it. And you probably played on normal your first time. I th- I want to say I played hard because I normally play on a harder difficulty oh. almost every time. Like right now I'm playing Cyberpunk. I play that on hard. Yeah. I played a Hogwarts on the hardest difficulty because that game is mad easy yeah. once you get the hang of it. There's nothing worse than when you start a game on normal mode and it's frustratingly easy. Yeah. And they don't let you alter it on the go. Yeah, Uh, because I probably won't play a lot of 60-hour games twice. (laughs) And, yeah. Well, I was in a rush to get it to you. Plus, I knew that I wasn't going to beat everything this time around. Like, I didn't beat all the Berserkers this time around because I was going to go through and play New Game Plus. And that's when I'm going to do all the completionist Mm, shit. Yeah, And New Game Plus is not out yet. No, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but on uh, God of War 2018, it was a patch. It was an update. It was not available at launch. Correct. So I'm assuming they'll probably do the same thing again. I, at least I hope they do because yeah. I do not want to grind for that gear again. Did they did they release that right when the new one came out? When Ragnarok came out? Is that why they released that patch for God of War? The first one, 2018? I don't know when the, the patch arrived for 2018. Okay. It was years ago because after okay. it was like I beat God Maybe of War. Maybe like a year after the game came out. Okay. It was there as soon as I beat God of War the 2018 the first time and i played it late i played it like mid 2019 okay. something like that so i want to say maybe six months after release not many games uh like new game plus oh sure yeah, i can bring my armor that's fun there is the perk like we said earlier spoilers if you're still here and you haven't left uh i would just love to go back and watch tier with like like a really close eye because you just know it's fucking odin screwing around the whole time so God, when you go I back that part of the game mm. what's that i said I, that was my favorite moment of the entire game i think uh, it's, the, it's in retrospect those are just the best moments uh because i was watching a lot of videos trying to just like pick apart what was going on sure and it's fascinating it's good stuff uh also just music uh, bear mccreary another great soundtrack Brad has resisted the urge to buy more uh, vinyl, though I didn't buy this one. I think. Good <laughs> I job, might, Brad. This I is might. just for me. Oh when gosh. I worked at Eagle Park with uh, with you, I used to play the uh, 2018 God of War soundtrack in the so. kitchen to get us all psyched up for the the rushes on the weekend. Yeah, Hell to yeah, the I point did. where uh, I think that year it showed up on my Spotify Wrapped. And I was like, damn, I got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> damn, I got a, that's not a problem. That ain't no problem whatsoever. You're just pumping people up. Yeah, man. exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, it's like turnover, My Chemical Romance, 
God of War. I'm like, no <laughs> way. You're in the top 10. How'd you get How here? How'd you get this? What is this? Yeah, it's the soundtrack's great, but I, w- I would be wondering if I went and listened to it again, if it's anything other than a bunch of Gregorian chants. I'm just like, oh. Dude, it makes cleaning your room or doing the dishes so, <laughs> so epic. epic. Yeah. <laughs> you got no idea, man. You pick up an old shirt covered in beer, it and like, it's just whoa. like, a light opens oh. up through the window. And oh, I, that was good. <laughs> I just almost did the Skyrim thing, though. The same thing you did. Yeah. I was gonna do the the Dragonborn. I'd say when I when I start chanting, it turns into that or possibly Halo. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about some of our characters. Uh, okay, we mentioned Kratos a bunch. Yes. Did you guys have anything you wanted to mention specifically about Kratos from this game? He's really grown. <laughs> surprisingly yeah actually yes i was gonna say like when you get to the like I, it's funny because like after i was done with this game i was like i gotta i'm gonna go replay 2018 i'm gonna go do it because i'm all, I'm, in, I'm like balls deep in this right now where i want to just keep playing god of war and i'm all done with this like i just 100 percented it two days ago and uh so i go back and like that's when i first hear again like close your mind to it close everything close your heart to their feeling they're not gonna feel the same for you and then i just realized like at the end of the ge- at the end of this game it's like no you can open your mind, son. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, that's just, it's just great. Well, it, yeah, I did yeah. the same thing. I yeah. went back and played 2018 the yeah. moment I finished this one. And like when, uh, when they kill the deer at the beginning and mm. he like thinks about putting his hand on Atreus' yep. shoulder, but yep. even that's too much for him. Yep. And then in this game, they have come so far. Mm. It's like, you fucking dad of the year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It's so cool. Especially seeing that, that, uh, that, that just build up, or I shouldn't say build up, but only like actually like fix itself, where they actually resolve their their father son uh, uh, the tension the tension yeah, yeah that they got going on there, especially like you know Atreus goes okay first of all for Atreus he's just like I can't go to Odin then my dad will die but if I go to Odin then I can maybe figure some stuff out I'm gonna go to Odin I'm like wait no you just said that your dad was gonna die if you go to Odin what the fuck's wrong with you <laughs> anyways but also Atreus needs to make his own mistakes that's true yes. he needs to be his own person that's true that's Kratos. True. I think that's the biggest arc that I experienced from him in the game is him just like coming to terms with Atreus becoming a man. Yeah. And also admitting that it's okay to be weak and mm-hmm. okay to be wrong. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kratos is ready for therapy. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, I mean, we get there close. We get there at the end of the first one. And I love that uh, it's a more personal journey on him accept, accept, accepting him as a as a man than it is in the first one accepting him as a god Mm -hmm. like feel like those two should almost be the inverse just because of a power dynamic but like the emotional like this is my son he's becoming a man yeah how overshadowing like my son is a god and i hate gods (laughs) is a big deal i like to kill gods but he's a god (laughs) what do i do do? (laughs) (laughs) well and it's also uh when when he realizes realizes he might lose his son, yeah. uh, he has to like come to terms with how much he cares about him and loves him. Right. Which uh, fathers, uh, at least in my experience and the experience of many many people, a little less loving, a little less uh, affectionate. At one point, my dad's like, "We don't hold hands anymore." I was like, "Okay, uh, all right, yeah, I guess, <laughs> cool, man." And that's uh, Kratos. I think. Uh, reminds me of a Dothraki person uh, in Game of Thrones. There's, there's no word for thank you in Kratos. <laughs> there is no word for sorry in Kratos. And in this game, he says sorry and thank you. Yeah. And I was like, I know. That's just that's the biggest arc for me is when he apologizes and Atreus just fucking throws it back. He's like, don't be sorry, dude. Be better. And he drops the mic. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And Kratos and like. Dead. Kratos says this look like, like you oh, motherfucker shit. did that. <laughs> he's, yeah, he does that straight up that me like that like nod. Like, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> he's like, that's my boy right that's there. It. That's oh, my boy. Me. I did that. Yo, um, tear, get out here. Look at my son. <laughs> look at that. Don't I've been on your ass the whole time, brother. Okay. Just <laughs> goddamn. Yeah. I, I I love that moment quite a bit. There's also one moment for Kratos that just really struck home to me. Uh, he comes home. And someone's talking to him. He's like, I'm going to bed. And he just walks into his room. <laughs> he throws his weapons on the ground, just throws his clothes off and lays down. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, you haven't slept since I saw you I in know. the first game, God of War 1. Like, so you got to like, be yeah. exhausted. <laughs> just finally, like, that dude works pretty hard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
And they only take one, like one little nap before they have to go to Ragnarok and do their thing, or, or you know, battle Odin and stuff. I yeah. like how they sleep in the tent there. And he's like, "All right, well, I didn't sleep well because I had this weird dream about my wife, and uh, now I'm back. I gotta go kill this other guy." God, <laughs> dang, Ragnarok again! God, I can't believe this. Uh, Treus, uh, Treus mm-hmm. slash Loki, mm-hmm. fantastic. Yes, yes, I, I think. Yeah, I was like in the first one in 2018. I was like annoyed with him a little bit. I mean, because he was like a cocky asshole when he figured out he was a god and everything. And I guess that's the point of the whole thing. But I, I haven't been eight in a long time or whatever he was. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. hard to relate. Yeah. Right, right, right. But uh, but then, yeah, and you see him in this game. It's just almost night and day because like he's actually like, well, I mean, he doesn't have control in the beginning. Obviously, he turns into that bear and then he figures out he's like, OK, I can control this and it gets better. It's just as the game progresses, it's just it's really it's really good seeing Atreus being able to be his own person sort of. He yeah. really steals the show in yeah. this game. I feel like he is kind of the highlight outside of like Odin being an awesome villain, but Atreus my kind bo- of my like Odin Boner is rising. We gotta <laughs> stay on Atreus. Okay. 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 Chill, yeah. chill. Yeah, no, but Atreus, like, you know, being with him for his mistakes and seeing him kind of go off on his own, like that for me really mm. made the game. Because Kratos, I mean, Kratos is great. I love playing as Kratos, but I really kind of savored those moments as Atreus. I think the fear that all of us had was Kratos is going to die. Yeah. Yep. They tease it the whole fucking game. Yep. I'm like, he's going to die. He's This is it. He's dead. And also, I'm sitting there, it's like, yeah, he's pretty old. He's killed like 50 gods. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Maybe uh, it's time. And I was struggling for the first part of this game. I remember talking with you about that, Tyler. And I was like, all right, Thor shows up. We fight Thor. And it's just the same. Balder shows up. We fight Balder. Mm-hmm. And all right, we're going to go solve some very simple puzzles. We're going to go explore. And like, it's beautiful, but I'm like, this is just very samey. And I wasn't getting a ton out of it. Mm-hmm. I think the the narrative is a little, uh, it fluctuates in how good it is. But- and there, there are low points for sure. And there are things that don't work. And then there are just moments that are some of the best ever. Mm-hmm. But the moment when... Atreus sneaks out and Sindri is like his buddy. I was like, this is the most excited I've been in the game thus far. It, it, but so, up until that point, I feel like the game really suffers from trying to be an epic cinematic experience. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cut scenes. There's a lot of kind of filler trying to get you to that point. And that was my big concern when you asked me how I liked it. I was like, there's just one thing I don't like. And it's that I had to play like, eight nine hours before i really got to a point where i was like okay i got something new in Mm -hmm. this new game to sink my teeth into Mm -hmm. but i agree it's just it felt very rinse and repeat and really heavy on the on the cutscenes and shit the first part of the game well i think that's the thing that did it for me though is like that first part of the game is like they still put that uh put that um like that rift between uh, Kratos and Atreus and like they really build it up like Atreus going through like his teenage years like trying to rebel against his parents and everything or his dad and everything and I think that's what really made it exciting for me in the beginning I know it was basically like the same as you guys mentioned before as the 2018 game but I think just that aspect of it of him growing up and being that rebellious teenager for a second was was exciting and then we got to that part where Atreus got to go off and do his own thing that was cool so, so good. Yeah. Just bad decisions right away. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to go see Freya. As soon as you're like, like, oh boy. Oh, yeah. Are oh, you boy. sure? <laughs> she's she's going to kill you. She, yeah. She's going to kill us. <laughs> Anyways, if you're not back here in a million pieces, we'll go home. <laughs> uh, Atreus' uh, story in this is fantastic. And that I think they're very much teeing him up to become yeah. the, the protagonist for the next game. Kratos will definitely be around. I don't know if he'll be the... It's, that's going to be a really tough sell when they're going to just have, all right, this is the Loki of War or whatever. I, I think I, the game will just be called Loki at that point. Or it'll be Loki's like... Loki's a good name, but he's also Atreus, man. I don't know. They, they make Loki seem like it's not a good thing, but that's just his giant name. Hmm. So I think, it, I don't know. Loki would be a good name, I suppose. Well, they think they would call it like God of War Atreus or Loki or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe son of the god of the god of war, the teenage (laughs) son of god, yeah, son of god, son of god of war. (laughs) It's it's a clunky ass title, but it's like the rise of the planet, or what was it? What was that fucking rise of the planet of the apes? Yeah, what was the third one called? They did the same thing. 
was... Return of the Rise of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> oh, they had a dumbass title for that third movie. It was like the dumbass same Dumbass title. <laughs> uh, Mamir. Yeah. Papa absolutely. Mamir. Papa the best. Mamir. Yeah. We're not worthy. I might get a Mamir tattoo. I've oh. thought about it. For... Would you get it right on your right butt? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, would you get it down there? <laughs> yeah, I'd get it. I'd get a tramp stamp. That's fair. A little no, bit to the right. No, it wouldn't be a tramp stamp. No, I'd get it more up on the hip, like where he hangs. Yeah. Like yeah. a little bit to the right. Tramp yeah. stamps can be really long. You can go okay, fair enough. You can go hip to hip with those. As okay. dumb as it would look, should Kratos not have like one of those like baby holders so <laughs> and Mamir can be like facing forward? <laughs> well, finally. Yeah. But then how would he say, behind you, brother? I know that too. But well, then he wouldn't have to smell Kratos' also, ass. Yeah. <laughs> you fought it, brother. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't help but notice you. Tried to fight again. I'm still down noticing. here. Still you're, in, you went in the bathroom, but I'm still down here. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> also, don't put me on the floor again. <laughs> um, Mamir, uh, Alistair Duncan. He is the smartest man alive. I put down half Siri, half GPS. <laughs> uh, and a uh, former employee of Odin. Mm-hmm, yes. Longtime advisor who kind of helped uh, make everything worse and then yeah. also tried to make things better. Yes. And I don't know A Midsummer's Night Dream, but he is a character from that. He's oh. Puck. Oh, really? He mm. is like a fairy character. Mm. I wouldn't mm. call him a fairy. It's like a fairy style of thing. If I knew more about it, I'd say, but okay. he is a character that like came from another uh, mythology over there. No, no shit. It's like Kratos. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Kratos. Fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> Speaking of um, people that are threatened by other foreigners coming to their land, now we can talk about Papa Odin. Uh, mm, mm. Odin, uh, voiced by Richard Schiff. Papa Odin. <laughs> Papa Odin, Daddy Odin. Uh, Brad Odinson is my new name. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Odin is fucking diabolical, entertaining, Man. fantastic to listen to, soft voice. Dickhead, hate him. Right. Be nice to Thor. He's a good boy. Right. <laughs> um, master manipulator. For sure. Yeah. Which is what we've been warned. Yeah. Several times. For a long time. Mostly now. by Man- Amir. Well, and like Mami- and Freya in the first game oh, yes, has her too, yes, yeah. piece to say about him. Mamir has. Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, oh. they're married. Mamir yeah. has a really good quote right away in the first scene. When Odin and Thor show up, and he says, uh, "Don't listen don't to trust him." Don't trust that bastard. He says, um, "If he says snow is white, he's lying." <laughs> and uh, it's when you just take it literally, of course not. But the only reason Odin would ever say that to you is for Odin's own purposes. Yeah. And he's manipulating you uh, every step of the way. He's either like being nice and complimenting you, and then immediately like. Every time he says something nice, he takes it away a little bit mm-hmm. later. Yeah. Or he's being very harsh. He is always up to trying to get people to do things for him. Mm-hmm. He meets the one person who doesn't give a fuck about anything that he has to say. He comes in and he plays every card on Kratos. And Kratos has one response to him. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let's not have war. I'll be nice. I won't kill your son. We can laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Just, no, just don't go after tear. No what deal. Do you say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, unstoppable force and a movable object. And Odin is someone who needs uh, to control people to like feel safe and secure. He feels threatened for his own mortality. And I uh, just love that Kratos shows up and he is the one person that Odin doesn't know what to do with. <laughs> yeah. And it's. It's awesome that Atreus even slightly falls for it because Atreus kind of thinks that he can he can work both sides of the field there sure, for yeah. the majority of the game. And double, you have double agents. Yeah. He's ten steps behind. <laughs> and you have Thor, who is arguably Odin's strongest favorite, most awesome son, right? Sure, yeah. Like in most in most Norse stories, Thor is the number one head honcho under Odin a lot of times. I, I've also heard that the portrayals of Thor being a bigger dude, mm. Odin being like a much smaller, like quieter dude, is a much more traditional approach to how Norse mythology uh, would have shown okay. them. Yeah, in Vikings, he's all like fucking one eyed and hunched over, and like he's an older, creepy looking dude. Yeah, so I heard it's actually much more accurate to like how their portrayals would be. Instead of Zeus, who's like bigger than life and like bigger <laughs> than everything. Thor is a very sad character. He yeah. is. And wow. But his relationship with Odin. Thor had a really rough time between like Thor Ragnarok. 
up through God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> it's like, man, this sucks, yeah. dude. <laughs> and he's also used as a tool, though, to like recruit Atreus because Atreus sees how poorly Odin is treating his favorite son and yeah. how well he's being treated yeah and it all of a sudden it kind of elevates atreus in his own mind like well he's treating well, me better than fucking he's thor. Son, yeah. better odin, than thor odin is nice to everybody except thor why are you standing here go do something right, yeah. get out of my face are you think you're smart enough to teach someone uh belittling him yeah oh it's so hard to watch um and it's great because uh right away when o kratos says no to odin uh, that's when he sells Thor to attack Kratos. So that's when Odin gets, he's like, I don't go through Atreus to get this done. But uh, Thor is played by Ryan Hurst. I know him as Opie. I know him as Lump from Lady Killers, the Tom Hanks film. No, cool. that's Opie from Sons of Anarchy. Opie from Sons of Anarchy. I, I thought it was, um, who's the guy? Ben Kissel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was, I was, <laughs> that would have been Ben Kissel, yeah. Uh, no, I thought it was, um, oh God, Josh Brolin. When I like heard his voice, I thought yeah, it was him, and I was like, "Wait a second, no fucking way!" And then it was not him. So it was almost like it almost broke my immersion because I I watched Sons of Anarchy a lot when I was younger. I liked the show, okay, and so I know Opie's voice, and the entire game, every time Thor talked, I'm like, "Who the fuck is that?" But I couldn't look it up because I didn't want to see any spoilers, right. okay. and it didn't and hit you, me. Until, and you would if you did, yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't. And it you hit never me know. at the end of the game, like ten reasons why Thor died. I'm like, <laughs> come on. God damn you, Watch Mojo! <laughs> I just wanted to know the actor. And they put that video out like two days after the game That's comes so, out. Uh, it's they fun. just put a Hogwarts one out that has a fuck ton of spoilers in it. I'm like, you gotta let the game breathe. That's right, why yeah. you, it, you you have to play things like day one to not get spoiled. Yeah. Or, I mean, we missed the newest Last of Us episode by I still one seen it. by one day. And I was just like, oh, you haven't seen it. Okay. Luckily, I work on construction sites and nobody wants to talk about anything. So I'm fine there. Uh, so Thor is great. We killed his sons. He has a, a great daughter. Yeah. Through Thrude. Thrude. Yeah. Thrude? Thrude. Thrude. Yeah. Thrude. Uh, she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thrude. Uh, Mina Sunwall plays her. Uh, she teams up with the Trace a little bit. I thought she was fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lady Sif, Thor's wife, who is very much wearing the pants in the relationship, I would say. Yeah. And yeah, it's a tough family situation. Thor, yeah, I was like, Thor's just got a broken home, something. I don't know, there's something fucked with that whole thing. Like Re just, Recovering alcoholic. Right. Yep. And two recently deceased sons. Yeah. And then the killer has moved into their bedroom. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and Thor didn't say. drink for like a week. So mad props to you for like, waiting that long. Good job. Uh, yeah. But I will say that bar fight scene was oh pretty, my that was fucking sick. <laughs> that was so epic was so, so yeah. fun it's just ill-advised to wield mjolnir while drunk <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's like those moments is what makes this game for me like right. when this cinema when this the cinematic like cut scenes and all that shit meets with the gameplay and then they interchange so quickly sure that's where this game just like chef's kiss yeah. i cannot get over it it like I could just picture it as an HBO show in my head, and I'm like, "This it is might be gold." Amazon. It, it is gonna, Amazon. It, it is going to be a okay, show. Okay. Recently, Cody Barlog says, "Last of Us has made things very tough for us right now." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I just saw Halo season one available at the library for rent. So that yeah. says oh, that oh says boy. where we're at. Right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break sure. and grab some more beers and be right back. <laughs> Sequel Cast 2 and Friends is a podcast looking at movies in a franchise one film at a time, hosted by me, Matt Bradley Shuri, Alex, and Thrasher. We also look at video games. We're working through Sierra Online's adventure games from Mystery House all the way up through Gabriel Knight 3 and larger pop culture topics. It's a lot of fun. For more info, go to SequelCast2.com, only on the Tokyo Beat Network. Today's show is brought to you by Epos Gaming Audio. With a comprehensive lineup of both wired and wireless headsets, gaming amplifiers, microphones, and webcams, Epos has everything you need to experience the power of audio. Like their H6 Pro lineup, which features two versions, an open or closed headset. The closed headset allows you to tap into exceptionally detailed audio and seals out ambient noise, while the open version delivers natural high fidelity audio with an incredible soundstage. Both headsets include a magnetic detachable microphone and a sleek design that has no wild RGB configurations, just good design. Listeners can save 15% by visiting www.eposaudio.com gaming, entering code 
EPOS friend 15 at checkout. That is EPOS friend 15 at checkout. And we're back, everybody. Uh, as we're continuing to talk about some characters, Freya, I think, is fine, but I didn't love her in this game. It was just, you know, she went out for blood, and then all of a sudden she was like, you know what? I don't hate you that much right now. And I'm like, well, I guess. The heel turn was horrible for me. When she was the, like, vengeance that is around every corner, loved it. Yeah. And then she went, like, as a fighting them, she's like, I guess we're friends again. And it was like, was just like way, nothing. it should have been something different. They needed to make their interests align more rather than just defeating that time warp dragon. Because I don't remember anybody's name from this game. Neethog, I played it. Neethog was a cool thing to fight. Yes. <laughs> but it's like the moment that happens and we're going to go find her brother. Like it just didn't feel like I agree with you enough to make their interests truly in lo- align. They should have done some more with Atreus and her, you know, the fact that she cares about him, yeah. and so does Kratos, they could it was there somewhere. It was just too big of a turn well, too quick for me. That yes. could have been well. That could have been the it's thing. Like Game like, of Thrones season eight. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, that could have been the thing though. Like maybe when she saw Atreus, that was kind of like the beginning of this turnaround. And then yeah. like then when she saw Kratos, and she's like, "Well, I'm not going to kill you. Let's go free me from this one thing that Odin has me captured here." Like, I think maybe that. Oh, I'm trying to like or, weigh or whether maybe, or not that would be as maybe much there, as killing her son. Maybe there could be a thing where they Kratos and Atreus like we have to free her, even though she'll just follow us through the realms. And then the bird follows you through there, and you don't know it's her the whole time. Yeah. And then she realizes you're trying to save her, and then she's like, "Why would you help me?" There, that does have some of the best like background dialogue. Sure. Uh, just because it was the most of Kratos. He's like, "Yeah, I have a little brother. His name was Demos." And he's just talking about like PSP lore. I'm like, what are you going to yep, say yep, right yep. now? Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Gonna, like, I just love him casually throwing out stories. A very yeah. rare dialogue you might get is him saying, uh, one time I was in, fighting in a tournament and it was with princes. Oh, yeah. And, it was Mamir. He asked about it. It's like princes and robots and, and the world's best and, musician. And the world's best musician. <laughs> He's talking about Parappa the Rapper yes. in PS Battle All Stars Royal. No shit. Yeah. He's like, we don't talk about that. I, he was a rapping dog. Because <laughs> I first, like, I think at first you thought maybe they're going to talk about Mortal Kombat, but then yeah, they went he was into, there too. They were talking about Bat- <laughs> PlayStation yeah. All Stars, and they they also call back to other PlayStation history in a very cool way. Those book of po- books of poems you're collecting. Yeah, I just that's so cool. Yeah, what what are they? Uh, well, they're all like old PlayStation games. Like I think one was Ratchet and Clank. Uh, oh, yeah. Other ones were like uh, Ghost of um, Ghost of Tsushima. Tsushi- that's one. Yeah, Bloodborne. Like yeah. the poems and yeah. like the covers are like the logos from the games. They're like famous famous PlayStation games. The poems you're getting. Yeah. Uh, if no, you didn't know. Shit, yeah, that yeah. went so far over my head. Well, that's the thing. Okay, so I, I secretly, I didn't secretly, but I watched a video today about all the Easter eggs. And oh, that was yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit, that is really cool. I didn't yeah, know that went over playing. my head. I, yeah, well, know. yeah, it, I forget. It was the Death Stranding one. I was like, this is a stupid poem. Like, this doesn't make sense in Scandinavia. It just sounds like Death Stranding or something. <laughs> Delivering packages, Black Goo, Troy Baker, Pizza Delivery. And I'm like, wait a second. I know what's going on here. Uh, Brock and Sindri return. Um, two of the best best homies you could ever ask for. Super upgrade to their story too. I was yes. super oh my psyched God. for the level of involvement they had in the in the turn of events. It was cool that they got to be side characters too, and you can actually use them as like your sidekicks. Yeah. Well, and it's nice, but there's also this thing where uh, the Sindri and Brock almost always are going out of the their way to be very helpful to you. And you don't really do a lot for them yeah. in return. Like, all right, we're going to go to your house, and you're going to upgrade all of our weapons, and you're going to give us this, like, drop near, like, super rare relic. And Kratos does say thank you only when you're, like, picking up the chest of shit that he forgot on the battlefield. <laughs> but uh, those dudes are, sl- like, slowly, mm-hmm. silently carrying the whole party, and they're not really getting a lot of love. Yeah. And which makes it extra... Heartbreaking, the turn of events uh, when Brock ultimately goes full homie status. And he's the only one who's like, no, fuck you, Tyr. 
And he's like, he's talking he's, way up at this guy. Yeah. And he's you like, You know that shit ain't right? Yeah. You don't wait to Asgard. I would love to replay the game just to see if it is indicated at any point when he figures it out. Well, it's oh. Oh, it's in that first it's in that the when the tear picks up the mask cuz that's when Tyr's like not only does he say I'm ready to fight, he says that I have a way into Asgard and Brock's like that's fucking real convenient right now. <laughs> and he's like also why are you calling the kid Loki? You know his name's Atreus. And he, he even says uh, all you've been doing is making passable dirt soup. And I think that's what sets Odin off the most. <laughs> yeah. My soup is great! <laughs> you yeah. son of a bitch! I, I think Odin's favorite part of his vacation uh, is because what Tyr is does most of... Most is that Tyr, what you're calling it? What Tyr does vacation? Most, <laughs> if, it, it would be Harry Potter 7, but it would be like Odin 7 and the vacation at Sindri's house. <laughs> Weekend at Sindri's. Weekend at Sindri's. <laughs> Weekend at Sindri's. <laughs> It just, oh yeah, okay, I got the thumbnail. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we found it. Yeah, but what he really does all that time that he's not like elsewhere is make soup. And if I had all the time in the world, I tell you what, I would be making more food at home. And I <laughs> appreciate yeah. that Owen just like, oh yeah, I'm going to make soup for two hours today. So good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love it. Um, yeah. And we also learned with Brock and Sindri throughout the game, uh, Sindri just also showing how much he's learned to trust Atreus and considers him a friend. He's like, just so you know, Brock is actually dead. And I kind of took his soul. And that's a major, uh, major thing. Yeah. Because what he's doing is now when Brock dies, like he does later, he's no longer able to come back. His soul is like lost forever. Yeah. Which is a major thing to do to your brother. Right, yeah. That's a very selfish move by Sindri. Mm -hmm. I felt like there might be a... like a possibility that there was a way to rectify that. They just didn't have the time. That's what I was thinking in my brain. Like maybe later there's Could this be, the is next be a game. side quest. Could be the next game. Bring yeah. Brock back. Um, heaven forbid if Kratos dies, Atreus's next game would be to like go into hell and rescue Kratos. I think that was something they were considering for this game. Man. But they're like, we've uh, Kratos has gone to hell to get people back a few times. But I mean, that would be kind of cool in this setting, like with his new n- new things that he's doing here. He's I, just I think banging like three Hellwalker ladies, <laughs> just rotating those thumbsticks. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. it. I was I was reliving my twenties. <laughs> okay, leave me alone, boy. I'm busy. I will say okay. you could have knocked. <laughs> <laughs> I got you a new mommy. Anyways, no, uh, no. <laughs> Her name is Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> and I met her down the street at the strip club. It's great. I think she's Greek. I think. <laughs> she came here over to anyway. anyway. No, um, I guess I don't know if I fully understood. So okay, I know I understood Brock was dead. Yeah. I don't understand how he kind of found out when they were talking to that mermaid lady. The she, lady of the forge. She lady couldn't forge. He, he couldn't speak to her. Okay. Because he had no spirit. Oh, she also couldn't see him. Yes, she had really? no idea that he was. That's there. why they. Okay, okay. I thought that's what it was, but I wasn't like I was a little confused at that part. It, and it's he's like it's me trying to talk to a bartender who's ignoring me. He's like, Can I get a drink? And they're like, just they don't even see me. Like I have no soul in here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Kratos like give him a drink. He wants a chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who? Oh, your friend. But yeah, and it's. They they realize it. Kratos realizes it with him too. And Brock is such a homie; he doesn't even mention it to Sindri. Is that it, I know I know what you did, you little twerp. Uh, yeah, did Kratos know at that time too? That Kratos, Brock was dead? Kratos says perhaps some she couldn't see you. Or, he's the one who like kind of pieces it together with Brock. Okay, yeah, yeah. They they realize it together, and yeah. Then Sindri was worried the whole time because Sindri knew if they went. Oh yeah, he might find. And oh, also Sindri like I'll go. And Kratos for no reason like no. Brock's coming. <laughs> I think Kratos just likes Brock more. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I, I would rather spend time with Brock than Danny Tanner over there cleaning the house. <laughs> Danny Tanner. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that Whatever comparison. happened to <laughs> sensibility? Milkman, the paper boy. That gives a whole new meaning to them all living in the same house, hiding from Odin. Yeah. Now I it see is literally a full and it's just like <laughs> Sindri, starring Sindri and Atreus. <laughs> and then they're like, Mimir is pulled up from behind the back. Oh. They just oh. add another one in there featuring Sindri. <laughs> yeah. Someone spills something and Brock's just like, ah, oh, man, shaking his head. <laughs> yeah. 
Sindri's wearing a little apron. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, someone was wearing an apron. I couldn't think of it. It shows here and it says starring Odin. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, what the fuck? Wait a second. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? We we get introduced to Anger Boda. She gets a, some pretty good scenes. She's more of a side character. Yes. Uh, I, oh. Laia de Leon Hayes is her name. Um, I know the, one of the things I knew going into this game uh, when, she's, when she was introduced as Anger Boda. And one of the things that just popped up, you can't even avoid, uh, Atreus' wife. Yeah, Loki's wife or whatever. It's going to be. Spoilers if you don't know Norse mythology, guys. Sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't know well, that. I didn't know that. But well, you, they, they, the they writing's figured, on the wall. Yeah, was, you yeah. figured. Also, I was, through, th- Thrude was like a... Was Thru- like Thrude a, was, yeah. Possible. Yeah. Possible. Oh, they're going to have... They, they could easily do a love triangle yeah. sort of thing. And then... And well, then eventually, you know, Atreus but picks, Thru- And Thrude is like, I'm into women. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Anger Mode is like, me too. And... <laughs> Right. It's Trace is to Steve Harrington the whole time. <laughs> it's hard to be a single mother when you're a teenager. <laughs> and your best friend is a, <laughs> a literal kids. talking head. Yeah. <laughs> I I will say that that scene that that the the uh when you're Atreus uh with Engraboda in Jotunheim, it felt like forever. Yes. And Jesus Christ. I've said this many times on the podcast, and Brad showed me the video. As soon as I was like halfway through that, I didn't know I was halfway through it. I was like, Jakey's right. My goopy goblin gamer brain is going to fucking hate playing this part of the game again. Because <laughs> it's not gameplay heavy. It's not fun it's like, gameplay. Man. Nope. And it's Riding just. a water ox. Getting some shit. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I like. Slowly. Your, I at like least your it's, water ox, Anger Boda. It's really cute. <laughs> it's and pretty cool. to look at. Yeah. And the problem. It is, yeah. The problem is when the game does start developing a big thrust to the narrative and you're excited to know what happens next nope uh two hours in jotunheim i would thank god that fight with her grandma gryla shows yes up. that was yeah. good yeah i, was I like, would prefer god. that entire segment just be a cinematic at that point right at least that way i can get up and make some dino chicken nugs in my air fryer <laughs> i can grab a beer i can go make fun of Devin. i can like i can spend time or if and i don't have to pause it or if they need it to be necessary, just like you can hit a button, it's like autoplay, which sounds horrible for a video game, but fine for a game like this. At least for that part. It yeah. could like autoplay a segment and you could just let it happen. Well, it's like. Well, it's like in. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Were you going to say Cyberpunk? I was going to say Red Dead. Oh, yeah. Same concept yeah, where okay. you can skip the ride after yeah. the necessary dialogue. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And there, there are definitely points. One thing this game is always this is great at is the extra dialogue. That's just um, like background extra flow. Like we mentioned Kratos talking about like, yeah, this one time I was climbing a Titan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, just, he talks about his old life. Like, and, I remember there was one he was like telling a story to Freya and Freya's like, is this about you? He's like, no, this isn't. No, this isn't about what my old life. This is about Drados. 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 The cool guy. <laughs> He's got a blue scar on yeah, his face. Big muscles. Blue paint. <laughs> blue paint. Yeah. Just the guys from Eiffel 65. Yeah. That's fine. He's covered in dirt and not ashes. He looks totally different. <laughs> totally different guy. It's uh, actually more of a soot. But who's cutting hairs at this point? <laughs> Kratos, tell me, why is your face all white? Oh, it's the ashes of my my wife and kid. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I asked, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, th- there is one moment when uh, Frey is very mad. She's like, what would you know about losing a kid? Kratos is like, like bitch. <laughs> like, it's like, I will. Ooh, you're, like, you, don't you, don't you don't know what you don't know who I am. <laughs> right, yeah. That's Kratos' fault, though. Right. He needs to be more open with people that are close to him. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Well, also, do you want to be out drinking with your homie? And there's like, yeah, I killed my wife and kid once. <laughs> I was a... Uh, so I was working for this guy, Aries. Like, Check, please. Yeah, I was like, Check. hey, I got to take go. an Uber. Thanks Did for the ride here. Why'd yeah, you man. bring him? <laughs> He's weird, man. Thought we killed his wife and kids. He says those are his ashes. Of life. <laughs> Holy shit. I thought he was just real pale. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I thought that was like a scarf, but it was a head. It was a head. It's a whole, <laughs> my God. Hey, what's that? Hey, don't poke me. Yeah. <laughs> I like the head more than him. Yeah. Bro. Uh, we meet Tyr, who's not Tyr. We do meet Tyr at the end, though, a little bit. Yeah, that's uh, ins- that was cool. Yeah, I, I like going to that prison, and all of a sudden, I'm like, are you sure it's the real Tyr? I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, Odin's dead. It's fine. It's cool. It's actually him. It's safe. It's safe. It's all good. It's very much uh, this the same thing. I think one thing that Odin does very well is when he's pretending to be Tyr, he is 98% of the time just saying what Tyr would say, because yeah. Tyr did become a pacifist. Mm-hmm. If you let Tyr out after the game is done... 
you find him like when you're traveling around to different yeah. areas. He's oh, just I never do, did that. He's doing, doing yeah. Tai Chi. Yeah, he's spots. doing like yoga. No shit. He's like, yeah. good job finding peace. Now let me be by myself. <laughs> Please leave me alone. That's Another like, person I probably don't want to go to the bar with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who bar, voices man. Tyr? Ben Prendergast. What the what fuck, fuck is he in? from? I don't know. Hmm. All right, I'm on it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, Heimdall, Scott Porter. Heimdall, I just put down a dickhead of godlike proportions. Man, as soon as I saw Heimdall, I'm like, I cannot wait to kill this guy. It's yeah. going to be so good. And, and they really test Kratos, where Kratos is like, that's it. I'm not killing any more gods. Nope. And then nope. they put Heimdall up on a platter. And like, and they're like, are you sure? I really don't want to kill him. Like, even he tried to get, okay, okay, it was awesome. When you kill Heimdall, like, Mimir, like, reacts, and he's just like, oh, my God, how did you do this? And it reminded me of that Men in Black scene where, like, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith are talking to that guy at the pawn shop, and they're just like, hey, like, he points the gun out, he's like, counting Tommy Lee Jones, like, counting to three, and he's just like, ah, I'm warning him, and then, and then, like, he shoots him, and then Will Smith is like, I'm gonna kill you, and he's like, well, I warned him, you warned him, and then he comes back, it's yeah. like, the whole thing, <laughs> I told you I wasn't gonna do but uh, anyways, yeah, it, I I was I didn't want to kill you. I tried not to kill you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he gave ha- him a chance. He has the Gallerhorn. Um, mostly, I don't like Heimdall. Also, in awesome. I really enjoyed the boss battle. Yeah, it was fun. he. It's a super violent death, which was awesome, mm-hmm. and the satisfaction I got from killing that Absolutely. motherfucker yeah, for was sure. fantastic. Yeah, one of, that would probably be one of my, like if I'm doing a top five, I got Tears reveal, the Odin's reveal, Heimdall's up there too. Uh, to me, the Heimdall battle I thought was good. I thought it was a well done battle. Um, what I like when I think God of War though is the the epic scale like big this is an uh, an important god or an important aspect of mythology so when Nithog, like the dragon who tends the world tree was a boss i'm like all right this is this is the good shit this is what i'm here for yeah. uh when you're fighting uh grandma gryla gryla and you're mostly just like fucking up her cooking pot yeah, <laughs> yeah. and i was still like i uh, it's like uh baby's first god fight a little bit for atreus <laughs> yeah but i was still like i was like really into it uh, anytime Maybe that you're going up there God against, fight. <laughs> yeah, that's good. and even though that I thought the Thor battle in the first part was a little bit too the samesies as before, right? As Boulder, I thought that too. Yeah, but uh, the Thor fights were fun. They were, yeah. And I liked it when he killed you, and he's like, "Nah, I'm not done," and then <laughs> just <laughs> gets you back. And that was so cool. Sorry, can go yeah, ahead. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and okay, so we mentioned uh, Angerboda and Atreus being. Together, mm. one of the things I was most excited for for this game is uh, in mythology, uh, Jormungandr, the giant snake, is their child. And I'm oh. like, I was like, how are they doing this one? Because they, they tease it in 2018 where uh, when he talks to Jormungandr the first time, mm. Mimir's like, he says he knows you. And I was like, that's how right, does he that does, work? yeah. And it's well, that's because the snake in Gryla's place, they take the giant soul and put it in there, and the snake slithers away. Oh. Yeah. And then there's a throwaway line later where they're like, I think the snake's gotten a lot bigger. Yeah. So Jormungandr came from that's when he was born. Uh, they put the, the soul of that giant into the dead okay. snake without a soul. Oh, that's, it became okay. Jormungandr. That was oh, awesome. Shit. I forgot about that completely. Yeah. And Thor hits him so hard during Ragnarok, it sends him back in time. Jormungandr gets sent back in time during Ragnarok is what happens. Oh. Yeah. Okay. D- wow, they that's, really made that... Yeah, that's really... What is the Doctor Who phrase? The timey-wimey... Timey-wimey... Uh, bullshit? Th- I think that. Yeah, timey-wimey bullshit. <laughs> yeah, they made that timey-wimey <laughs> bullshit Doctor work. Doctor Who poster. It's yeah. some timey-wimey bullshit. I have a high tolerance for timey-wimey bullshit. They really <laughs> nailed it with that one. Yeah. There is one thing that hasn't been... Confirmed as a mystery from 2018 that they thought would be entered in this game. The person who sounds the horn right before you meet Jormungandr in 2018, you don't know who sounds the horn. And we don't know in this game either. And Cody Barlog has said, uh, no one knows yet. I will. Yet. Ev- he says, eventually, I will be messed up, and, like drunk enough or something, and I'll just tweet it at you. But I'm not telling you yet. He has said that. Like, we don't know who actually sounded the horn. Hmm. That's a mystery. I, don't I know who it was. About, Anger Boda? It was Troy Baker. <laughs> it was Troy Baker. <laughs> Troy Baker's in this game. He plays... I don't he, doubt it. He plays Bitter Squirrel. 
That's right. He oh, does. that's right. That's right. You told me oh, that. Oh, that's yeah. right. I forgot about that. That guy. man yeah. is everywhere. I'm pretty that's sure cool. if I go home tonight, open my pantry, he's going to be right beside the ramen <laughs> Enjoy noodles. the latest episode of Last of Us. Okay. So real quick, can I take a, t- can I take a quick tangent? And here's sure. Tyler's tangent. Okay. <laughs> so I knew from an article before the season. I've played Last of Us. I wasn't worried about spoilers. So I read an article before this. Are you spoiling anything from this season? No, this is it's uh, my prediction about the episode that I haven't seen that just aired on Sunday. Okay. So spoilers for the first seven potentially, episodes of Last Potentially of a very lesser spoiler for the final episode about a certain actor that might be in the episode. I don't even want to know where we're going. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. kind of like... Troy I'm Baker's like, in the show. Yeah. Okay. My prediction is that Troy Baker plays Daniel. Okay. That's my prediction. I haven't seen the episode yet, and I was really drunk at White Reaper last night. I was at a concert and Wait, we went. White Reaper was in town. They were at Madison. Oh, do you like White Reaper? I love White Reaper. Did we just become best friends? Yeah, yeah. Dude, Ben knows a shitload about music. Dude, they, I, I wouldn't say a shitload. They but, killed it. Oh God, but I was at the bar afterwards. You still doing the music podcast? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not doing any podcast right now. I'm too busy. You're, you're doing literally this doing one right, one right now. now. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> sorry, my own podcast. I'm hosting myself. Sure. <laughs> yeah, White Reaper was great. But I was at the bar and that was my drunk thought. I was like, I haven't seen them all season. What other big characters are in the first game? He's probably Daniel. No, he's and actually he's playing Bitter Squirrel in Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> what um, is this? A crossover episode? So, wait a second. We don't have many other characters. There's Freyer, uh, Freya's twin brother. He's a cool guy. Kind of broy, but good guy. Yeah. It was kind of broy. Yeah. He's the really popular guy at parties. That's a little too loud, but he's still a nice guy. His character yeah. design reminded me of the the tall dwarf from The Hobbit mm. who falls in love with the elf. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> That's all I can see. Good luck me remembering that name. <laughs> no, the movie. Yeah. Uh, Bofin? We'll go with Bofin. Yeah, Bofin, sure. Bofin these nuts. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I just said. I'm sorry. We will not apologize. Don't be sorry. Okay, yeah, you're right. Bofin these nuts. I'm be sticking good. to it. Be better. <laughs> or, no, no, no. No, oh, that's no, right. no, don't be sorry. Be Bofin. <laughs> be Bofin. Be Bofin. That's good. Uh, Ratatosker. I thought was going to be a bigger thing than he was when I saw the like the artwork for him. He just shows up and t- explains how like the tree works a little bit. I, if you haven't done it, go with Kratos to Ratatoskr and fucking hit that chime like a hundred times in a row. Ratatoskr <laughs> gets so pissed. <laughs> I gotta He's do like, it. Stop with the f- chime. He's like, I see what we're doing. Like, are you trying to make me angry? I'm not going to. I'm not going to indulge this. It's not not painful for my ears. And eventually, he just <laughs> loses it a little bit. It's pretty great. Uh, and then we meet a, a dwarf lady named Lunda. She's voiced by Milena Vaintrub. You might know her from the phone commercials. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What? I was going to say that. Uh, um, I don't know what else she's done. She was in the, some, some nerdy shows. Was it? She's the, the pink logo. I'm thinking of pink logo phone. T-Mobile. 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 That's it. Right? She, the commercials? She's a, she's a phone seller. Is it the AT&T girl? Yeah. Oh, it's the AT&T girl. Yeah. I love the AT&T girl. Yeah, okay. She's awesome. Yep, yeah, she's Wanda. No shit. Yeah, I know. Yep. I have a new favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> and her dog is cool too, Helka. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That which, side which, I, which I thought was a pig. I thought it was a pig too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is an ugly dog. Because I was like, that's a fucking pig. All right, whatever. That's not a dog. All yeah. Right. Then I come back later and I look at it closer. I'm like, holy shit, that's I a dog. I need you to find my mysterious orb. It's Helka's ball. <laughs> she lost it. She, I, that was That's the, the AT&T girl. Yeah. yeah. Damn, she's got yeah. some talent. I had, I would have never guessed that in a million years. Commercial with LeBron James. It's a blacksmith and God of War. London. <laughs> I really, I really, Damn. I can fix your Leviathan X. Yeah, what's up? It's like, all right, I guess since Brock's dead and Sindri what? retired... <laughs> Retired, Sindri he hates s- us. Yeah, we're still gonna live in his house, though, right? We yeah, all agree we're cool? staying in his house. Cool with that. He's not coming back He's for a while. He's not using right? it anymore right now. But uh, for for what was that? What's the one um, area that's just hot? Mis- Mus- M- Muscle 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 Heim. Heim. Muscleheim. Muscleheim. I every I, time. Don't worry. In two weeks, I will have evacuated all of this. Yeah. Knowledge, but 
Moselheim, when you're there and you like go to repair your stuff, she just says the same line over and over again. That's all I could remember. It was like, oh, I should have brought a cup of water <laughs> or 20. And every time you go up to her, she says that. I'm like, Jesus Christ. They have other dialogue in this place for this one? Enough with the water. I'm like, I understand that it's hot in here. Okay, I get it. I'm fighting a bunch of other people. Here. This is in 2010. We, we don't need the same dialogue every time. Oh, my God. Usually, th their use of dialogue is very good. Yeah. One thing that I do love about this game is when I am fucking charging around Vanaheim on my canoe left and right. And Mimir's like, let me tell you a tale. I guess we'll do it later. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he ne they wait way too long. I want to well, hear the stories. So half the time I just sit going. in the boat and I wait. So the brother the looks at done. me and says, I'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah. Not now. Be yeah. vigilant. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Well, at least with Ratatoskr, because you'll be in the middle of a sentence. You walk away. He's like, fine then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, they're good at uh, stopping the stories with uh, Mimir in particular. But like they leave little things dangling and then they continue it really yeah. well which it I is, do appreciate I was yeah. gonna say they're like uh, like he said continue with your brother oh, with a story about your brother Freya or something like that I remember, I remember that that was pretty cool good transitions my uh, Brad's second big gripe in the game uh, <laughs> let me try and solve a puzzle for a couple minutes yeah. Maybe and, a minute before. Oh my god! Yeah, before they're just like, "What if you did this?" Shut up! I was almost there. Yeah, yeah I'm I not literally even, just walked in this room. I mean, I'm just, not even in the room, and then all of a sudden, Trace is like, "Try the lever," and I'm like, uh, "We're in a hallway." I bet dog. you like, could freeze yeah, like, that, Walter, brother. <laughs> You're facing the other direction. I'm like, how do you see yeah. that? <laughs> if this is a first-person game from Amir's perspective, my god. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely get motion sickness then for sure. Just like, oh my. god. Does he close his eyes? His sense of equilibrium. I mean, he's got an inner well, ear. I mean, he only has a head. I think he's just fine. He'll never get a head in life. But, um, <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, that's about it. That's it. <laughs> what does he call a headache? Uh, just hurt? This, what are the, my body hurts. Just hurt? I'm just, just hurt. I'm hurt. I'm yeah. hurt. <laughs> Thor doesn't have jokes, but when Mimir gets pulled out, the first time he's like, you lost weight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. It's like, even Thor, he's like depressed and angry. He's like... It's a, it's too easy, and I think that I'm gonna do it. Speaking of depressed and angry Thor, I feel like that is such a good take on Thor compared to Chris Hemsworth's very yeah. charming, funny Thor. Hmm. Even though we got fat, depressed Thor for a hot minute there in the MCU, I really appreciate them taking it in a total different direction. I appreciate being a different direction. Um, I also I, like Chris Hemsworth Thor a lot because I'm not even discrediting. When, that. No, when yeah. he was in like the depths of like his depression. He was still worthy, and I found that to be uh, important as well. Uh, this Thor, the, the, I mean, his climax is when he's with Kratos after the battle. And Kratos I didn't is, get that cutscene. What? You said climax. Oh, yeah. and they were climax. I was oh making a God. sex joke. <laughs> no, when, uh, when I was making a sex joke, guys. <laughs> when Kratos and him are making <laughs> sweet love. That's so dumb. Yeah, yeah, that's when you have to do those things again where they pan the camera. In Asgard, you see, like, he pushes buttons to bang. <laughs> Let's settle this like men. <laughs> it's like, all right, yes. Oh my god, I think they're fucking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that's you not both a were so confused. I know because I was like, wait, what? How did you skip oh. that? Like, how did you? I'm like, oh, oh no, what? I'm sorry. Six, got when, it. <laughs> when, Kratos, when Kratos rolls over. <laughs> The, the scene where he convinces Thor, like, we we don't have to let our kids live in a world like this. It's like, it's up to us to do something about it. And um, that, then, <clears throat> fucking, it's like that one time you stand up for what's right and you do the good thing. Thor is immediately it's fucking stabbed. killed about it. Well, speaking about that, like, so the entire prophecy is that it, Atreus is going to kill his father, Right. Is it Atreus killing his father, or is it just... Uh, it's Atreus holding... A dead... Yeah, holding Kratos. Yes, yeah. but it's kind of loosely, like... It looks like Atreus he's Atreus cannot to... prevent oh. his father's death, yeah, okay. is what I should have said. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. And then instead, at the end of the game, to have the inverse of that, have Odin kill his son, I feel like at Whoa. some point we had some Black Mirror shit where we... Yeah, I never thought At about some that. point in the story, the prophecy changed. Well, the whole point of you... what Faye did... Right. Uh, she hid the prophecy... Of what would ultimately happen, so they could be the masters of their own fate. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't want Kratos and Atreus to uh, specifically know what was going to happen or how it would happen, so they would have to make their own decisions, and that's how they're able to like alter it. Uh, I think that's the, the what happened with Faye because she definitely 
She was playing some like 4D chess because the, say, the like, last the last like giant mural you see yeah. was the one that she hid from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't then why would she if she's like faking that, why would she put it in there that they're gonna that he's gonna die? Well, if she's the if she knows what's gonna happen, then she knows what they have to see when they need to see it. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Also, Groa's shrine, when you go there to learn more about the Ragnarok prophecy, sure. With Tyr, not Odin. Uh and then you actually see it. And then Groa's prophecy, she had hidden the truth of how Ragnarok would happen. And if you watch that scene again, Tyr walks up to it because it's Odin. And he's like, he looks really pissed. He's looking around. Yeah. And they don't say why. Is it bad? Uh, Yoga was bad today. I don't know. Like, they, they don't yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> there was actually a couple, like, uh, they did a couple Easter eggs of how you could actually tell that Tyr was not Tyr in a couple uh, scenes. Like, I think he accidentally called Freya Frigg. Yeah, and there was yeah. that, and then oh. like, and, and it's it's nice like background dialogue. Yeah, because you don't even catch it. You're not in a cut scene. It's one of those like organic scenes. Yeah. 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 Do you remember some of the other ones? There was another one where like that uh, when he was looking at uh, the demise of Odin, uh, when Tyr is walking up to it to get closer, he like just bumps into uh, Treyas like like he's not even there, but it's like Odin's like shocked to see what he's seeing. Yeah, and like. Atreus is like, what the fuck? Why did you fucking do that? I do remember that, oddly yeah. enough. So they didn't know if like it's... But there was that, and then also there was like a, another like Easter egg. Like if you have the subtitles on, uh, Tear, when it's Odin, has not the um, the thing above the Y, but when you find the actual Tear, it has the thing above the Y. Oh, cool. That's, that was that was like a There's like parentheses around yeah. it too. <laughs> Tear. <laughs> when, not Odin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, and there's a... a like Odin's really pushing the peace thing. Anytime someone's like, "We have something. We should go to war." He's like, "Whoa, the Freya I know would have not. <laughs> I wouldn't kill Odin." And she's like, "Come on, Tyr, we're friends." <laughs> um, this game is largely about exploration, third person action adventure game. Sometimes I didn't like the angle behind Kratos too fast. Uh, it's weird when your character is like the big off-centered third person mm -hmm. guy. Only a few times did I have an issue with it. Uh, that's where you spend most of the game though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do like that camera view a lot, but I get what you're saying. There are times where it's like, it just doesn't really work for the, specifically the combat I would feel. And we didn't mention this, but the entire game, like the previous game, one camera shot, one continuous take, it never cuts away the entire time. Mm -hmm. Even though there's dream sequences, I guess it's just like whoosh, yeah, they got a little like <laughs> transitions between like between like the Atreus gameplay and the Kratos game, gameplay. Well, no, it's just like the camera changes focus and yeah, it just follows and it somebody back. else. Okay, and it's, it's very impressive in the film when they do a long take in a video oh, game. I'm like, it's cool, I get it. Kratos even has a, a dialogue about it where Mimir says. Greek plays are all, they're so stupid. They take place in one day from one perspective. And Kratos is like, it's meant to mimic real life. Or, Kratos even explains it, and it's also just talking yeah. about what's oh, happening. Actually happening yeah. And that's why Kratos is so fucking tired, because <laughs> I've gone to seven realms, done 30 favors, and done six trials in Muspelheim, fought it, four berserkers. I'm fucking tired. Yeah. In my 40 or 50 hour gameplay, I slept a lot. Yeah. And Kratos slept one time. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> He slept once in his... Oh, yeah. That one time he had that weird dream, I don't count that as good sleep. I don't well, feel like I mean, he hit REM. It wasn't... No, that was, <laughs> I don't feel like he hit REM. Yeah. It's super tactical about this yeah. right here. Dude, like the Sandman season two, Kratos kills the gods of sleep. <laughs> God. Just, yeah. Well, I guess maybe he already did that. I don't know. There's like... Uh, probably. <laughs> something. There's Fuck, a, yeah, there a did. god we're somewhere? Gonna, we're going to say he did it. Yeah, he probably did it. Uh, the puzzles... You have a god of sleep? Dead. What are you guys' thoughts on the puzzles? Uh, the puzzles, I found them to be, uh, if I'm looking at another PlayStation title, one game that evolved puzzle, puzzles throughout the series and I really enjoyed was the Uncharted series. I feel like the puzzles got a lot better as the games went on. I feel like these puzzles were largely the same. Uh, there wasn't, I mean, you could freeze water and what, that was really it, like freezing the water in the shoots. Yeah, but yeah. other than that, there wasn't a lot of difference. And then constantly having Mimir or Atreus point out what to do the moment that I walked into a room was super, it pissed me off. Right, yeah. yeah. It, remember the old school God of War games where you were doing like this three hour long, like moving one arm and you move another arm and then all of like the box lines up and you can go up one floor. Yeah. Like those things 
back in the day, those like giant moving puzzles were fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. And this just like, it's almost just tedious. Kratos just freezing one water trough to raise one boulder up. Yeah. When Kratos, I've seen him jump mountains, like you said before. <laughs> yeah, the dude the is capable. Thing. The door is there. I will jump. <laughs> yeah, the puzzles irritated me, and the the commentary on the puzzles irritated me <laughs> even more than the puzzles. So that sucked. Did you guys enjoy the the role playing elements like? Uh, weapons, armor, crafting. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. It felt kind of one note the same way the first game did, yeah, in my I opinion. I was going to say, it didn't feel too bad. It didn't feel like it was like in the way or anything. I, It's just the story for me. Like, even if there was a puzzles, and I know, like, of course, at that point, there's no dialogue until they tell you that you're a fucking idiot. Uh, <laughs> Which is real quick. One thing, real that, quick. one thing I do enjoy, though, I think I enjoy, when I show up and there's something glowing a different color and I just throw my axe at it and they're like, I don't think we got what we need for that one, brother. Yeah, yep. yeah. We should mm -hmm. come back in about three hours. <laughs> uh, that That's the only time I want them to tell me something real quick. Right, yeah. Because yeah. then sometimes they didn't, and I would throw things at it. Like, and I was like, well, I we, just start shaking my mirror around, like, wake up. Like, hey, what's this? Sorry, I shook you. <laughs> and then instead of the puzzles, which should be, like, challenging and rewarding because you're unlocking, you're you're playing a main quest, and you're unlocking something. You're unlocking the next room. Or you're progressing the story forward. Those puzzles should be difficult yet rewarding. And then when I'm in the desert with the dog sled and the giant jellyfishes, and I'm looking at a building or a we, we haven't sand mentioned dog castle. sleds or giant jellyfishes yes. once yet. Yeah. And that's wow. just like if someone hasn't played the game, you really just blew their mind. Yes. <laughs> and then you're, you're with these what? dog sleds and the giant yeah. hefkafa. Yeah. And then I'm looking up at this like fucking broken sand castle, and I could see a chest up there, and I'm like. Now Subtle. this is fucking challenging. Like, how do I get up there? <laughs> I, I like the the throwing puzzles when there's like you have to hit the three gongs or you have to time it right or hit like the right arrows and reflect sure. your axe. Those sure. I like enough. And, until you get to a point in the game where you hit two of those gongs and then you look up and you see the thorny bushes on the one. You're like, fuck! I'm gonna have to I come back for you. No, yeah. the, the stupidest one is when you have to like. Use the certain arrows and link your fire to get like. There is some. Oh, oh my I god! I yeah. hated that. Those were never fun. Those, Those were, were never great. fun. Yeah. If I make the radius the size of Montana, yeah, and I can get two of those fire pits in there at once, I should get a two for one deal there. Yeah, exactly. And it never worked. It never worked. <laughs> I hated those puzzles. I forgot about them. I think my. I think it was almost so traumatic that my brain cut it out of my memory to <laughs> save me the the trauma. <laughs> I hated them, and I cannot stress that enough. I hated them. There's something. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, did I make that clear? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> I'm on board with you, man. I get it. <laughs> I, I, I like I like in video games too when God of War 2018. It's like we we did everything. We have the best armor. There's like a throwaway line where Chris like I I, I got rid it. I got rid of all that stuff. Like, what do you say? He like threw it away or no? It's like because Cinder. I think Cinder or Brock asked like, "What did you do with all the other stuff we made you?" And he's like, "I used it." Did you want to save some of that stuff? No. <laughs> yeah. That armor we got for beating all of the Valkyries. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's good. Oh yeah. My. It's just uh, explaining why a uh, character in a video game in the sequel has nothing and they start at level one. Yeah. I love that shit. That's good. It's so That's stupid. Good. Yeah. We are going to jump through some hoops for that, you know. <laughs> uh, Leviathan X returns. Yeah. Uh, they add a lot of ice to it, a lot of ice mm -hmm. techniques. Mm -hmm. And I do like the skill trees to unlock new attacks. Where if you use them enough to you unlock more, mm -hmm. or you can also like increase the attack power sure. or the functionality of it a little yeah. bit, and that works. I always did damage. I don't know why. I just I didn't. I never did anything else. I, me too. And, I, there 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 are layers of complexity in this game that mm -hmm. I didn't fuck with because I didn't need to. It gets slightly. I, I felt the same way about 2018. The skill tree is slightly overwhelming, like because you have so many combinations and so many different skills and mm. like shit you can do but like once you find something that kind of works i wouldn't call it cheesing by any means sure. but if you get good at that one style of fighting what is my incentive to break away from that and do something different and that's why i liked this game because it rewarded that sure yeah yeah i i at some point too i it's like i didn't know what i needed to do i'm like i'll just hit different buttons and the biggest knock I can say in the combat for this is there are points where I would just fucking like I'd have my 
three or four buttons that hit continuously because I just want to make sure I'm always spamming arrows with Atreus or Freya. Mm-hmm. So I'm always well, it's square. I'm just like square. Triangle. Is I'm it triangle or square? I think it's square. It might be. It's been a long time, guys. <laughs> Regardless, I'm spamming that and then I'm just doing the same like Get three. the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, I got to pee anyway. <laughs> Poser. <laughs> uh, but I, I just wind up kind of like hitting those same buttons yeah. over and over. Right. And the combat... Uh, mm-hmm. how, how much of the fucking around with extra bosses did you do? Not too much. Not too much. I felt like I was still just doing no, my same combos. No, fuck you. What? You said you fought Gana and King Rolf. That's fucking okay. around with a lot of optional well, I mean, bosses. Okay, that's oh, that's what you meant. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I thought I, you meant like your combos and shit. Like, no, no, no. Uh, but then but yes, I fucked all of them. Yes. To, to to do those berserkers though, I had to really master the combat. It's kind of where I was oh going for with that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm I'm not going to count Gana or King Rolf because I did I did set it back to easy, which is nothing to be ashamed of. It's good if you want to just get the story going there. Uh, but for the rest of the berserkers, I did it all on give me balance and like it's just trial and error and if you like fuck up once then it's always like one shots one shot hits yeah it's just so frustrating every time i saw a berserker i remember there was the uh it wasn't even the three berserkers that we had to face at once because it was the two sisters and the one those those were one of the worst they were one of the worst but i think the very worst was the two the the two the the couple okay I, I yeah the two yeah the two later. yeah like the husband and wife berserker or whatever. Yeah. That they were shit I fucking sucked. wanted to blow my brains out. Sorry. Uh cut that out. Uh, you, you, I wanted to, you can say that's fine. Okay. So I wanted to just like it was just oh my god, it was so frustrating. I remember like I was picking up to play the game. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a few more things. Maybe I'll continue with the story. I'm gonna just I found a gravestone. I'm like, I'm re- I'm back in the apple core. I hated going back through the apple core again. I hated doing that. It was very bad. It's fucking <laughs> tedious. It was so tedious. So then I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm just going to get this shit done before I continue with the story. So then I find that Berserker Gravestone, and then there's those two. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's just like, it took me like three hours yeah. to finally beat that, those Berserkers. I, I beat two or three Berserkers before I realized they were the super bosses. Yeah. I just thought they were regular bosses. Because if you're... Another gripe I would say is, uh, I feel like this game does too much optional... Like, if there's side content, I do it. And I get so far away from the story because I am in Vanaheim. Yeah. And I am saving Burger. My boy Burger. <laughs> Burger. Burger. Burger thought he was badass and just jumped off a flying boat. And he did. It was he, great. It was cool. Yeah. He just like, hold my beard. He just stands up and jumps off. He's like, Vanaheim. Yeah. He was like, oh, cool, Burger. Yeah. It's like, he's still alive, right? And so, yeah. He's there fine. he is. But like that area. The crater. The crater, and then you go into the jungle area. I'm like, this is a fucking huge side thing, and I hate it too. It's like I know that Atreus is in trouble, brother, but we could walk around for four hours. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to that area until I had Atreus. Oh, I'm just we're like okay, yeah, but, the way yeah. that they like we could explore a bit before yeah, we go fucking to- Ragnarok. I know. I was gonna say they really. I didn't think. I was wondering why they were like telling me to go do extra shit before I did Ragnarok, and uh, I'm like. And then Atreus left, and I'm like, oh, that's why they wanted me to. That has been my beef with every single role playing, and I'm doing air quotes because sure. not all of them are role playing games. Every single role playing game ever is when the stakes are high and the main quest is really picking up steam. And I'm looking at you, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, Grand mm-hmm. Theft Auto, yeah. mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto Five, uh, Grand Th- all the Grand Theft Autos. Cyberpunk 2077, The Witcher Three, like all these games where they expect you to inhabit somebody and do side shit. Even The Last of Us 2 to a small extent in Seattle. Mm-hmm. Like, you are removing the the urgency for me to complete this a massive the pa- thing. The pacing is just fucked. Yes. And at a certain point, you I just you barrel through. You can't have high stakes and no pressure. And I, I, I really wish games, you know, yeah, fuck around with side stuff for like the first half or two thirds, but once you, it shouldn't be like the last hour of the story. You can't do anything. It should be like the last, you know, good eight hours. Like, all right, just strap yourself in. We're gonna go on the fucking adventure now. Mm-hmm. And like, I guess now we can go to all of these spots after Odin is no longer a big fucking threat. Maybe we shouldn't save this ghost's garden. This ghost worried about her garden, <laughs> and we're gonna clear her garden from thorns. We have a lot on our plate, Freya. <laughs> but do you and want, you want to me this? to clean her garden? Oh, we're looking for a recipe? Okay. <laughs> this is a, we're looking for components. 
of a recipe. I got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Helka has lost her ball. Like, this is more important than this fucking garden. Oh, really? Helka lost her ball? I lost my fucking son. To <laughs> <own it. laughs> We're not the same. That's it. <laughs> I was treasure hunting with my son. <laughs> Fuck off, ghost. <laughs> That's straight up, straight up. Taika Waititi is no ring dog. It's off, ghost. <laughs> I have a high tolerance for stupid side quest bullshit, but God, every time a ghost, know. every time a ghost pops up, I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> I was cool with it. I know you felt like Kratos there because Kratos was like, why are we doing this? They're dead. Who cares? You know, even, even Kratos this time, he's like, no. I, I don't mind. <laughs> Sometimes he was into the side quest, yeah. which is very un y but <laughs> oh yeah, those side quests were a little much. Man. Um what was your do you guys have an armor that you'd want to call out as being important to you? I think I went through the whole game just kind of with my hodgepodge of armors until like until I was like done with the game. Then I finally figured out a couple things that I liked. And then even then I went back to the original armor. I just upgraded all that shit and then it made like a badass armor. It didn't have any like extra specs to like luck or anything like that, but it was still like great for your defense and everything. And it worked out for me. Sure. I, yeah. I liked the must climb armor you get from completing all the challenges. Okay. I had that full set and that was pretty dope. Yeah. I don't remember the stats on it, but I know that I wore it for a long time. Okay. So I use Lunda's armor. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. That, I it, that. it was absolutely important for those super hard boss battles. That's how I did almost all of the boss battles and the last part of the game. You throw the axe until you're only like barehanded and you do like 40% extra melee damage with just fists and everyone like you attack it's poison in like five hits, oh, which shit. immediately drops them down a level from like five to four or like yeah, eight yeah. to seven. And then also if you have this uh, certain shield, you do a shield bash and everything that's poison explodes to do extra damage. It's like this stupid, almost broken mechanic. Uh, I used, so I was just really upset Kratos with fists for a lot of the game. Um, the Chains of Olympus return, always cool. I do like, though, that when you go to see Surtur, the one of the first like beings in the world, he's like, he said, <laughs> we need you to do the Ragnarok. He says, nope. He nope. sees the Chains of Olympus. He's like, yep. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, I forgot about that. The fucking space battle. It's, yeah. That shit was gnarly. It, it was a gnarly was cool. location. But I just hate that Surtur's like, no. And I was like, ah. Come on, man. And then he says, okay. <laughs> I thought I thought that was kind of maybe my gripe. It felt like Ragnarok was kind of useless against Odin a little bit. It just felt like, oh, there he is. Let's go inside. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you beat Odin. And then Ragnarok's like, I'm going to kill everything else. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, there there is a lot going on that I don't know. Uh, it was a lot of moving parts. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't pay attention too much to Surtur. There was a cu- there's a cut quest too where uh, maybe that's part of it because they originally Surtur was going to show up as Ragnarok and it wasn't working, yeah. and you had to go find his wife, the Frost Giant, yeah. and you had to get her on board to like also help. And that's what really would have caused Ragnarok, but it would have been like another fucking hour quest. Sure. More. Yeah. But uh, instead, now you just get his wife crying. Yeah. You go through the. Which is sad enough. Yeah, it was, yeah. But. Uh, Sorry, baby. Just, to just wanted to call out the, the Chains of Olympus, because even Surtur sees those. He's like, those shits is tight, dude. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like primordial fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, just drive that, that shit out. <laughs> yeah, drive that shit in my heart. Come on, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> He's like, ooh, yeah, put that in my heart. Let's do it. He's fucking just. Like, so up. is he ready or something? He's yeah. like, just fucking blow the horn. I'll be there. <laughs> Ugh. All right, let's go. Yeah, and you, I like that, the battle you call that, though. Uh, I mean, there's Valkyrie Queens. If you need a Valkyrie Queen, they're fucking everywhere these days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're lousy with them. Yeah. Um, uh, National Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Damn, dude. <laughs> no, uh, but the, like the two Valkyrie Queens just show up uh, in that space battle. And I'm yeah. like, sometimes they're like, I love it when a troll has a name or like, uh, they're like, this is Roloff Gnatsen. I'm like, oh. Okay. And you read the biographies like, Noble King of the Trolls. I was like, I didn't know. Cool, cool. <laughs> I yeah. thought he was just here. <laughs> he just started. Uh, so if you look it up, there's some like weird full <laughs> names for the trolls, and I'm about it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Oh, there's two more Valkyrie queens that we that are still around. Sure. Right. But I mean, also that area is beautiful. I remember when I first walked into that area with Surtur, 
I was just like, I want this tattooed on me somewhere with Kratos somewhere. Yeah. I Before I bought my PlayStation 5, I bought a very nice LG TV. And I spent a lot of money on it, and I was very proud of it when mm-hmm. I got it. Hell yeah. But I bought it for a PlayStation 5. Like, so it's that's, got HDMI 2.1? Yep. And when that bitch came on, like, God of War Ragnarok looked fucking beautiful on my TV. And that was probably one of the shining moments. Oh, that or, like, the first time you get to the kind of dwarven city swampy area. Okay, yeah. And you really get the freedom to, like, move around and look around. I'm like, oh, fucking. Spartelheim was popping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's yeah. Spartelheim. That's right. I will forget all of these in two weeks. <laughs> uh, we also get the drop near spear. That's cool. It's cool. Uh, Kratos has used his spear yeah. back in the day. I forget what it was called, but it's a spear with the wind element. If you know the element, it's a wind element. And he throws it. It explodes. And he can also boing off of it. And you jump and boing. Like yeah. a little twing. Yeah. I remember getting it, and I was like, I don't want a fucking third weapon. I don't want to learn another weapon. Yeah, right. And then it by the end of the weird. game, I was switching between the three. I was like, this is all right. Mostly for the skills. Like, because they, they take, like, the recharge time, L1 and R1 or L1 and R2. Yeah. And you'll want to cycle through. And then they do throw enemies where you have to kind of switch out. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I do like that sequence, though, when Sindri goes to his basement to find the drop near. And it's just like, he has this room of, like, a thousand rings. That's one of the times Odin almost slips up. Uh, because he met uh, Brock and Sindri are talking about how they have the drop near, and Tyr comes oh over. He's like, "You two stole it," and he almost blew his cover there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah because oh, naturally yeah. Odin was very pissed because they stole it from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the elevator scene, right? Where yeah. he comes up. That was when the cutscenes hit in this. They hit they like do. they are. So they're funny. beautiful to look at. They're well mocapped or acted. What I don't know what's so, actually both. acted. Both, both. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, they they are mocapped and then they're acting, and then there are fucking an army of animators doing their jobs too, and yeah, it's, and it's, but it's not until I've had eight beers and I'm sitting there in front of the screen that the the vision is complete, and that is when Sindri actually is me and I am drunk. Yes. <laughs> Fun fact: I beat King Rolf very drunk. Oh my I went, god! I went to Gana and I stayed up an extra two hours and got drunker and beat her the same night. Hell yeah. I don't. I barely remember. Balance? I barely remember beating Gana. Uh, still, still give me balance and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I didn't change difficulties. I, I thought Gana was actually almost easier than Rolf. I, really? I almost won. I got her on the first time almost, but dude, that poison build with Linda's. Uh, armor oh yeah. Okay, you're saying that. I had to replay the end of Ghost of Tsushima because I was so drunk I didn't remember beating the game, and then I logged <laughs> back in the next day and was like, like "What oh, am I?" Done. And I had to like reload an old save or something like that. Shit. Yeah, that was all of the Halo tree for me almost. No Jesus way. Christ. Yeah, on, in Elden Ring, I was just dirty scotch drunk one night. <laughs> it's when Carly was watching this dog, so she wasn't home for a few days. And I was just up at like two in the morning on the hardest part of Elden Ring, just like just hitting my head against the wall. And I, I did it. And then I, I was my second place, I'm like, hmm, this is vaguely familiar. <laughs> Uh, fun fact: Armor you can transmogrify it. If your yeah. if your armor is level nine, you can just change it, edit the appearance to look like any other armor that you have available. So you can look however you want after you max level something. Never been a fan of that in any game whatsoever. Ooh. It's a cool option, but like I don't. I did use I like it in a, Diablo. I did use it a lot in Diablo yeah. three. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to, because otherwise yeah. you look hideous. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But I like my, I paint my shit all the time. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, there's also. When you are just using the best armor you have available versus uh, what looks cool. And it's like, a, I saw a Hogwarts Legacy post about that. You meme, should have saw And someone it. just looks so stupid. But it's like, that's what I got. I'm wearing these spectacles right now. Yeah. We don't need to talk too much about the story. I think we've hit most of the big bosses. Uh, yeah. I think the only part that I really enjoyed we didn't talk about was uh, Atreus with Thor traveling through Muspelheim. That was fucking awesome. That was cool. Because Thor treats him like like a father, but without any compassion. Right. Are we talking about the first time or when Thor is doing it very drunk? Is there two times? I think there's, there's two times. Yeah, there's yeah. two times. Yeah, there's right? two times. Yeah. It's like, right. I don't need parenting advice from you, you fucking... Prick. And then uh, you maybe, send maybe, him off to go do a yeah, challenge yeah, so you can sneak yeah. off. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the first one. That was the first time around. I was like, oh, but you, could, you, you probably couldn't do it. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? That yeah, was pretty fun. pretty fun. <laughs> I liked it. It was good. Yeah. Um, 
my only issues really with the story were the pacing. I felt like it meandered too much. Like Kratos goes to talk to the Norns to try and get informed about fate. I wanted him to kill them so bad because of the because of the first three games. We could, like, yeah, I was like, we're here. Those are the like, theories. Just do it. Just that's, do it. This is what you do, Kratos. Do it. Yeah. And they're annoying too. Yeah, that one just keeps walking by, like saying what you're saying. I know. I'm like, I was like, what the fuck her in particular? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he doesn't, and they probably are smarmy because they know that he won't. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. But that that part where it's like we already know what's going to happen. I don't think he was really informed, other than he learned Heimdall would kill uh, Atreus, Atreus. Yeah. which didn't happen because that's just uh, none of the stuff happened. I hate that shit. Um, I'm still upset that every time you kill a troll, it's the exact same animation from yeah. the first game, which was the only animation in the first game. It's like, let me smash their heads with giant sledgehammers in multiple ways. At least give me a couple two tree. Couple two tree. Just couple a two little, tree little bit more. Yeah. I feel like that that level of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I wouldn't say... Uh, Care, um, extra effort. It's not uh, asset it's, uh, reusage. It's like... Uh, fi- it's, I don't know. It's like a finishing touch. No, okay, yes. No, no, no. A, a little finesse. A little, a little more finesse, finesse right, right. Yeah. In, the, in the animations. Sure. And Kr- Kratos only knows one way to kill trolls. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it is... I will say it is cool. I, I feel... I know like it's very repetitive. It is very cool, though. But it is so cool. I mean, I'm splitting hairs at that point, but... Yeah. Um, we kill Odin. We, we beat the game. Yeah. And uh, Odin's boss battle, I died once. It took me two tries. Yeah. But I had That's also right, beaten Ganon and Rolf at that point. Um, okay, see, yeah. I didn't he do that was afterwards. not difficult. He wasn't too difficult. I I love the comeuppance at the end where everyone's like, we're not going to kill him. And Sindri just shows up out of nowhere and fucking, fucking smashes yeah. it. Yeah. I was like, dude, Sindri's kind of having a moment right now. Well, Sin- I was like, if you look at Sindri and how everything he went through, and it's- like you mentioned, like the like Kratos and Atreus aren't giving him anything no. for everything that he's doing. They're coming and then in his, his brother house. dies. They're not even wearing um the little like booties on their dirty boots when they walk yeah. in. Yeah. 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 Okay, I was like, oh, so you're not gonna wipe your feet? Fucking oh you're, God. you're going after- into his house. Right. How disrespectful. And after Brock dies, I don't think he showers because like from then on, he's every time you dirtier. see him, he's dirtier and dirtier yeah. as the game goes but, on. But you could say, like, even though like he is doing all this stuff for Kratos and Atreus, he did bring that upon himself where Brock, you know, and can can go nowhere now. And Sindri Sindri is dealing with those thoughts too. Yeah. He's dealing with it. And I love I love that one line that Kratos has when Atreus is trying to bargain with bargain with Sindri about like, I'm sorry, is there anything? And Kratos says uh, something like, let him grieve the way he wants to. Right. Or something like that. Kratos even says it's like, we'll, we'll be we around. Be, we'll be around. Which or, is yeah, like, like. And he says that uh, in the first game in 2018 when Atreus, uh, I was reading this codex because there's a, there's a scene when Atreus is like trying to talk about his mother died and Atre- uh, Kratos kind of yells, don't think because I'm not crying that I'm not grieving or right. something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is, I mean, letting Sindri grieve the way that he wants to is such a far cry from close your heart to it, which was yeah. like one of the most memorable lines of the first game for me. So it's like you get this whole entire character arc and it really feels like you come full circle without having to kill Kratos and hand the hand the franchise over to Atreus, mm-hmm. which I thought was pretty awesome. Yeah. So after the game, after we kill Odin, there is a little extra content. If you go back, <laughs> sorry, if you go back to Midgard, uh, the Midgard. Ho- the house that uh, Freya was living in, Charlie, yeah, she just left this big giant turtle unattended. He's pissed. He's pretty upset. Yeah, Mostly, I gotta go back there then. And she's like, oh. no, it's not too much. But yeah. she's like, I haven't fed my cat in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Burger moves in with him. If you save Burger, Burger will move in with him. You have to oh, go back. Is it optional okay. to save Burger? You can save Burger in Vanaheim. Well, you I saved save, Burger. You have to save Burger, don't isn't that do you? Have to? No, that's oh, a side quest. That's a, that's a side quest. Uh, I, I saved the fuck out of Burger. Yeah, I saved him right away too. Um, but yeah, then you can go see him in Vanaheim, and then he'll go move in to Charlie. Okay. 
And he's like, I might write a book. I'm like, sure, dude. Do whatever you want, man. You're living in a turtle. You have stories, bro. (laughs) You jumped out of a flying canoe. Yeah. I think. uh, And you now live in a turtle. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you got half a a Narnia right there. And the travelers, uh, Odin made a false religion for the travelers to try and convince them to find a way into Jotunheim. Mm. So those, like, super slow dudes, the giant ones, they're all just thinking they're, they're worshiping, like, a shitty Scientology about yeah. moving into Jotunheim. That one, though, the one that always backs up into you, he'd be so good at playing in the post. If he played for the Bucks, <laughs> dude, he just boxing you out the whole time. Dude, he's got skills, man. God. Just, um, um, if you go back to Vanaheim, Sif uh, has moved into Vanaheim with Hilda Sfini, yeah, who we know as right. a, a dog or a pig from the first game. But is now a oh, human. Oh, that's right. It's a yeah. dude. Yeah. Yep. He's the pig that you injure Shoot and then heal. Right. In Niflheim, Sinmara grieves her suitor. You can rescue the real tier. Mm-hmm. Just doing yoga, real tier Did shit. Not do that. Yeah. Top, top tier shit right there. Top tier. Top shit. tier. You, you hey. didn't get the. You didn't get the new. You didn't get the actual tier. No, because uh, once I did some like a little. I did a little bit exploring after the game. A little bit of completion shit, and then I was sure. like, I'm waiting for new game plus. Okay. And I did the funeral scene and shut it down. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, if you go back to Elfheim, Thrude finds Thor's hammer there, setting up that she will not be wielding Mjolnir. I mm-hmm. did see that. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, in Helheim, Mimir confesses that in exchange for Hrasfogir, the giant fucking bird in Helheim, in, for aiding Kratos, she wishes to have a successor as the ruler of Hell someday. We don't know what that's going to mean. I yeah, know, I, I, I went looking God. for that for a while. I thought it was going to be the maybe the giant dog that you fight. That's, Fenrir. Yeah, that was such Dude, a that cool scene part. is great. When you it's get so Garm, cool. who is just this wild beast that can go between realms. And, you know, and all of a sudden he's like a little snooky bookie. Uh, yeah. Chris, yeah. Like, Chris is like, wait, that's Fenrir? And he goes, sit. <laughs> and the big dog sits. Like, hmm? Yeah. That's like such a dad move just to tell a dog to sit. And the dog like cocks its head and is like mm-hmm. wagging his tail. It's like super psyched to see you. It's like, yeah. holy shit, that is. And I mean, they saved it because Atreus is there, keeps saying, is there no way to do, to not kill it? Right. And the only reason that Kratos learns it's okay to not kill things sometimes is because of Atreus. He has learned to sometimes not occasionally kill things. I think that was a, a really... A uh, big part of the story as well for Atreus and Kratos. Like that's when Kratos finally trusts Atreus. And that's when Atreus puts the soul of uh, Fenrir in in Garm, which is also teased a little bit by um, was it uh, Fre- Freya? When he goes to see Freya, she's like, "You know, your knife has a soul in it." Also, I don't like you, and I'll kill you. <laughs> like, and that's when he realizes, here. like, "Oh, I took my my dog's uh, soul with it." Yeah. Um, Okay, well, just mention some collectibles quick. I'm going to read a list of numbers. Sure. 47 favors. Cool. 35 Nornir chests. Mm -hmm. 53 legendary chests. 48 Odin's ravens. Fuck those things. (laughs) They're easier in this game than the last game. They are. But 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 when you miss three, that sucks. Well, I mean, I missed like eight overall or nine. And I'm like, I'm not going to go figure out which ones I'm missing. Well, you go to the map. Well, even then, it says like you're missing three or four of them, but then right. you have to like go to Google. Yeah, and that's fair. Yeah. And, then and the it's just like that tedious that we... collecting that I don't like to do. Yes. Okay, fair enough. So you got all the ravens. Yeah, I got all the ravens. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, did, I, I 100% completed. I did like yeah. that I got rewarded for getting the ravens this yeah. time as like a tier system. Yeah. Where like cool. if I like got 12. eight of them, I got to open up a chest. Like sure. that was cool. Yeah. And that last game, there were the like 53 talk, of them. And the ravens talk like. Children, Children out of a horror movie, like yeah. yes, and then we were killed. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to open these like, chests God, anymore. What are gonna happen to here? Up. Uh, we got fourteen books, thirty-eight artifacts, eighty lore bits, ten treasures, ten berserker gravestones, six dragger holes, ten remnants of Asgard, six hell tears, mm. nine realms in bloom flowers, six linworms, four stags of all seasons, fifteen Muspelheim trials, fourteen relics slash hilts, five shields, seven jewels of Yggdrasil. 38 Mystic Gateways, and four Lost Pages. Uh, that's the list of collectibles. Wow. And one of the books I have down is from MLB The Show. Yeah, which, that's right. It's a baseball. Which That sounds like a horrible poem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a take me out to the ball game. game. Take. And then there's something about Cracker Jacks in there. Yeah, Babe like, Ruth hits a dinger. Yeah. It's awesome. In, in the mirror's voice, it sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's about, yeah. it's about it's it's Kratos, Kratos kills <laughs> a middle aged alcoholic, points to <laughs> the sky, and then eats a hot dog, and then cheats on his wife. <laughs> That's it's Babe Ruth. <laughs> Kratos kills Babe Ruth. God of War 10 confirmed. That's it. <laughs> he puts down the Leviathan axe and picks up a Louisville. That's it. Smash uh, the shit out of it. I, I don't think we need to talk too much about the Muspelheim trials. Yeah. Uh, it was clever. Like, I, I, I hated him this time. I didn't do them all. I did them all. I did them all. I thought it was, I, I guess, like, I don't remember 2018's trials because I didn't do them all on that first one. But this one, I was like, okay, yeah, this is cool. Maybe it was easier. I liked the first yeah. one more because the second one was just a repeat. Yeah. Like, that's fair. Each each stage had three different level variations, and then you had to complete two of the levels in a certain, yeah, in a certain order, order to, to unlock it. the I hate, floor. I, I hated that, like, when they told me I'd have to go back and redo two things to unlock one, I'm like, I'm not redoing things and for you your, had to do it a lot. I'm not. I was like, I said, I just did the easiest ones. But even then, I'm just like, I don't want to redo anything. I like at least fighting Gana. My my two cats have knocked the ball out I of know, the toy. I was gonna say it's just. <laughs> Sorry, like, pickles. Hey, wait, what the hell? Oh, his name is Pickles. That's Pickles, yeah. Oh man, I used to have a guinea pig named Pickles. Pick, pickles McNulty. Pickles McNulty. Wow. Because uh, if you've seen The Wire. He always has his look like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> He's literally looking around right now for the toy, like, like, the fuck did it like, go? Where the fuck did that go? <laughs> and uh, Martin Lionel Jaharis McFly is the other God one. God damn, that's cool. Yeah, they're good boys. McFly. I think I met Pickles once at your place. At my place? Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Probably did a podcast, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. R.I.P. Pickles. R.I.P. Pickles. Um, Moose Flame Trials, uh, Berserkers. <laughs> Uh, you guys were talking about Bodvar the Spheres and Star Star The troublesome is the pair, the du- yeah, the two the, the duo you didn't like. I fucking yeah. hated them. Did not like those ones. I no. hated Svig Svig Dogger, the Cold, and the Sisters of Assault Ilska. I hated That's the great. Battle of the Three. The three. The, the multiple ones were tough. Yeah, yeah, they were. At least the sisters had they shared the health. Yeah, that was good. But there's I, two of them. That too. Yeah, they also they usually kept a distance too. Um, and I actually finished off the Berserkers. Like, I think I only did five before I finished the game. And then I did the rest of them after the game was done. And I felt like it was a lot easier afterwards. Yeah. It's always that weird balance of, uh, am I strong enough? Or do I want sure. to get stronger to go forward? I was like, I'm just going to come back later after beating probably about four or five of them. Yeah, that's that. Because I was going to say, like, I, there was every once in a while where my, my uh, process was just, like, going to a gravestone, saving hitting the gravestone, seeing what their health bar looks like, loading the save, and then just not fighting them. That is Brad's take on Elden Ring, where he runs into a dungeon and looks at the boss and was like, I'm going to grab this shit. I'll be back later. And then just <laughs> bail. <laughs> the deuces. See you. I was like, oh, man. Marker. <laughs> Two days later. <laughs> yeah. and But with God of War, I would run into a fight that I couldn't do, and I'm like, nope, I'm staying. And I would do it for two hours straight, yeah. and it sucked. That would piss and me I'd off get angry, so bad. And I yeah. did it. And I did relent a little bit on the Berserkers, but yeah, you, you fight King Rolf. And then I was really pissed to find out he wasn't the ultimate boss, because it was Gana. Mm-hmm. And Gana wasn't so bad. I haven't beaten Gana yet. God! Gana, there is a cheese... <laughs> I have seen that there is a cheese strategy, though. No, and I hate I ha- when he says it. Not, not that you have yeah, to be. Yeah, I was I like, he said it. He's just like, oh, it wasn't so bad. I'm like, fuck you, man. Compared to some of the Berserkers, Gana wasn't as is bad. Gana, but maybe it, we had different strategies. Maybe fair. that was yeah, just like, be Is Gana harder than the Queen Valkyrie? I, I don't the know. Final she, I, didn't even, I didn't even play that one. I was so pissed at like, just playing the Valkyries themselves. Because she. I heard that she wasn't. I've heard she wasn't as bad as the ultimate boss from 2018. Yeah, the final Valkyrie from 2018. Sigrun. To Mimir. Definitely Loves. had a relationship with. Yes. And she yeah. took that head to bed. And we don't know what happened. Yeah. But I think Mimir, did, did he, I don't know what he got, but uh, she he, got some. Uh, I was like, she got something. Like, all she has to do is like, all right, Mimir, good night. And then just yes. lays yeah. her down, you know, everywhere. Mimir was probably into it. Yeah. Probably, I mean, he probably is like, yeah, hell yeah. This is better than sitting next to Kratos' butt for <laughs> like, the all, all day. That dude doesn't even wipe. Like, I'm fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Can I move to your other butt cheek, brother? <laughs> Starting to smell over here. <laughs> <laughs> the wind is blowing the wrong direction. It's not going to get any better on the other side, bud. Yeah. Uh, Gana's another battle. A uh, few things I wanted to mention sure. post-game. 
Cody Barlog told Eric Williams, the director, that three important aspects have to happen in this game. He said, you can do a lot of what you want, but like three things have to happen. He says, Ragnarok must happen. Brock has to die. Hmm. And Atreus would depart from Kratos in the conclusion to set up something new. We are departing Norse mythology for this one. Uh, Atreus is going out to find other giants, lost yeah. giants. Other mythologies have giants. Oh. And they have said oh, the future. Um, prior to the 2018 release, Cody Barlog said that after the Norse era, the franchise would move either into Egyptian or Mayan mythology. Ooh. Egypt could be cool. But I think Mayan would be more exciting because I know less about it. Yeah, okay. and origin. Okay. Is... And they also like they mentioned a lot of like uh, Chinese and like Asian mythology, which would be cool too. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I would like Mayan, uh, Egyptian. I it was it came out a while ago, but like Assassin's Creed Origin is right there. There's no Mayan. There's nothing in that. I mean, I could go watch Something Apocalyptico new. again. But other than that, like, there's really no media. I just no watched Wakanda Forever. I learned a lot about Mayan stuff there. Oh, I forgot. I haven't seen that yet. Actually, I don't think I learned anything about Mayan mythology there. <laughs> they, like, were Mayan really they were Mayan people. Inaccurate. They were Mayan people. So we'll count it. I mean, all I've heard was the Egyptian one. I thought that would be pretty cool. I like, honestly, I, I'm yeah, that what, guy. Where would you want him to go? Oh man, I want him to go into Boston, Massachusetts That's mythology. <laughs> <laughs> the final boss is Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. Like, yeah. what is that, dude? Well, dude, dude those, to, those are the two schmucks you have to fight all game. Yeah, yeah. and you have to fa- face him at like Fenway. <laughs> yeah, fucking <laughs> this fucking guy. Green monster You're coming to Harvard Park. Yeah. This is yeah. Boston. Yeah, oh, my God, that was pretty good. Um. Yeah. But no, I mean, like, it'd be, they would never do it, but I wouldn't mind, like, if they did some sort of Christian uh, mythology. If Kratos gets to fight Jesus. <laughs> no, G- Jesus, the, he wouldn't fight Jesus. Jesus is the ult. Uh, Kratos couldn't at this point. Atreus, maybe. Kratos is a peaceful guy, and I think Jesus is ultimately peaceful. If you, like, I went to Catholic school, he is a peaceful dude. God, that is an Old Testament motherfucker. Who Kratos could be mad at. And if you want to go Book of Mormon, that's the third book of the Bible. Ooh, we can have some fun. You can go to outer space. Go. Everyone gets their own planet. Like, <laughs> there's possibilities. Kratos goes to space if we do the Book of Mormon. Um, just beat all the Earth gods. If I could just like, and go after I, the Egyptian, monster. A Native American mythology could be fun. Oh. Yeah. Egyptian yeah. would be cool because I can imagine a dope-ass ba- boss battle with Anubis. Yeah. It just seems too obvious. And the rock is the Scorpion King. I, I, I maybe Asian mythology. Oh, like maybe they'll save that Egyptian one down the line after they do all the other ones. Yeah, just keep Kratos, keep killing. Yeah, but <laughs> to me though, it's like whatever would be the most money making prospect is what you do next. I feel like Mayan sounds awesome. That does. Sound I'm cool. on board for that. Yeah. I want it to be that. But do they really want to? they really want to go into something that was? Wait, yeah, Mayans are real. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's yeah, sure. they were. Okay. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. They're, whether or not the gods were is debatable, but yeah. Kratos will kill him. Well, I guess yeah, I guess Spartans were also real. I don't know why. The, I just like blew past that. I, I was reading in the news just today that uh, the the uh, Odin's, people's belief in Odin was confirmed to be 150 years earlier than they had ever thought. Because oh. they found another, like a coin that was way earlier than anything mm-hmm. before. 150 years earlier that says... Something like in Odin, we trust like on our fucking quarter or something like Holy that. Holy shit, okay. So Odin was even more uh, OG than we thought. Just some old dude in this like cool hat like, I'm really friendly. Everyone loves me. <laughs> What's up? I'll kill my son though. It's cool. Yeah. I could turn into a raven. Yeah. I got one eye. There's one thing cool. that Odin, <laughs> that, that was like confusing to me at first when Odin is talking with Heimdall and Atreus. And Odin turns around, and Heimdall has moved to the other side. And Odin's like, where'd he go? And he's turned around. I was like, why'd he do that? Odin knows where Heimdall is the whole time. Mm-hmm. Odin is playing up buffoonery to seem more innocent, more harmless. He's so fucking manipulative every moment. And I just love that he runs into Kratos, and Odin says like a thousand words. And Kratos says, nope. No. All Kratos says is the word no to him. And it's like... How do you talk to Kratos? How do you manipulate Kratos? Because he, you can't. Uh, he has to be tear, and even then, he can't manipulate him. Right? Yeah, because Kratos still does what Kratos does. Yeah, yeah. I did like that slight interaction. I forgot. I think it was in the dwarf area. 
Svartalfheim. Svartalfheim? Whatever that was when Odin showed up randomly and just talked to Kratos. Be like, hey. With, he went Durlin in front of him, the little okay. dwarf Durlin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was going to say, like, hey, uh, something, something, you can't even, your son's with me now, blah, 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 that kind of shit, just get in his head. And Kratos just, like, uttered, like, five words saying, like, I'll be the god that I was. I'll be the god killer that I was if you really want me to be. Yeah. And I can, I'm, don't, don't fucking tempt me. The, Odin has control over everyone in his realm, and then this guy who's literally killed an entire pantheon of gods shows up. <laughs> no one's like, oh. Ah, shit. He's going to be a problem. I was like, yeah, I was just like he's going to be of an Of all issue. the blocks he could move on to. Like, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think we need to call out side quests. I crafted recipes for ghosts. The whale one was pretty cool. Yeah, that was freeing, cool. Yeah. Freeing the, the water. I did. It was a whale, right? Yeah, the, the, well, yeah, the whale creature yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, it is... I don't have it. I was going to look it up in a minute. <laughs> that was cool. I liked that. I liked freeing the jellyfish. That was pretty cool. That was cool. I liked... Okay, so I recently became a father. Uh, and when I got to that part, freeing the jellyfish and how he was like... I'm not looking for Kratos for parenting advice or anything, but I mean, I mean, he did this. Kind of this game, you could. You, I was like, this game, you actually could. Yeah. But uh, but like when he like told that story about how these jellyfish, these two big jellyfish that you freed, all of a sudden they sacrifice everything for their little ones, and then Trace is like, how could they do that? And he's just like, parents do that for their kids. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, oh my god, I just became a dad, and I would, I love these kids so fucking much already, and they're only six months old, and fuck. It was just it was just really cool. And you'd lay your life down for him. Yeah, absolutely. Without a thought. Not without a thought. Yep. Yeah. The half goofa. Yeah, that's it. Inspiring love everywhere. I like to think that my wife and I are those jellyfish you, flying now. You are. We are. Yeah. That's how we made our children. <laughs> <laughs> Two at a time. That's it. God, we just wanted one. I, I, I love them both. I just want to say I love them both. You have twins? I have twins, yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, we were just planning for one, and then, like, when we found out that we were pregnant, it was cool, and then we got to our first ultrasound, and they're like, huh, I don't know how to tell people this, but there's two in there. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And I put my hands on my head, and then they're like, wow, usually the dads pass out. I'm glad I, you're kind of staying up here. I didn't know you brought a two-for-one coupon. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I, there's no good way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was, that was that. So, yeah, we got twins. Yeah. Damn, at least awesome. you, at one least boy, you, one girl. At least you didn't have three. That's you know what. Or may, I mean, if you did, it would have been fine too. We would. We were actually. I was worried. Like, what if there was one just hiding in the back? Like one more. When don't like, don't Google that because there sometimes they pull a third kid out of a brain somewhere. I saw that the other day. Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah. What? I don't know. Like an, another baby was like growing inside of one baby's brain. And they pulled oh. out, they pulled out like something that looked vaguely like it was from an alien film that was. A partially developed fetus okay. growing in a baby's brain. I did see... Uh, baby, That's why you don't Google stuff. Yeah, I did <laughs> see a guy from like the 1920s who had like a baby that grew out of his stomach. Like he fused with his twin. Oh, God. And it was like he had like a, like some arms and some legs hanging off. Yeah. I assume uh, so, not alive. No. Oh, okay. yeah. And back then they didn't have the medicine to remove it. So he was like a carnival act and apparently he made a lot of money. Oh, there you go. I did make jokes about uh, crafting... A recipe is a side quest. That is an important side quest. I just want to mention this. Um, uh, one of the developers, it's an important just because of the story behind it. Uh, a developer of this game passed away during the development of this game due to epilepsy. Mm. And uh, they were his partner. They both worked on the game, Jake Snipes and Sam Hendrick. They were both working in the game, and then one of them passed away at a very young age. And the the story for those two ghosts is... Uh, a story of two men who found each other in this world in a very hard world to not only be two gay men, but also just to survive on their own. Sure. And that was the story of like crafting their recipe. And it, it's a fucking good one to do. It in- increases all of your stats permanently by five. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, this is much better than cleaning the garden is what I'm trying to say. Don't clean the garden. <laughs> craft the recipe. If right. You can. Uh, this game won awards. Best narrative, best score and music, best audio design, best performance went to Christopher Judge, best action adventure and innovation and accessibility at the Game Awards 2022. Very good game, very well received. Definitely not as good as Elden Ring, in my humble opinion. Christopher Judge gave one of the best fucking speeches you'll ever see at a Game Awards, so have you seen it? I haven't seen it. I want to go check it out now. Imagine one of the earliest speeches in the night, and they're trying to be on a schedule, and Kratos comes up and speaks... In ellipses, just like there's three periods, which behind every word is like first, 
I'd like to thank my mom. <laughs> Next. Oh my God. And he, he went on way too long. And they tried to play him off. And he's like, Next. He just talked louder <laughs> over. And he just kept talking as slow as he wanted because he just wanted a big award. And it was the funniest thing. Them trying to play Kratos off of his acceptance speech. <laughs> and the dude just got louder like, and louder. No. I fucking love that. Yeah. Uh, I do just need to read one thing from our Discord. Uh, because our good friend Ryan, Kratos Nick, uh, Christy Nick, he wrote some nice things on God of War. So I'm going to read this. Uh, sure. Read his thoughts here. Simply put, I love this game. This is going to be a gush fest. Apologies. I feel like it took what made the first one great and expanded upon it. Yeah. The story about changing your fate was thrilling and touching in all the right ways. I was truly worried that this would be where Kratos would sacrifice himself for Loki from the mural at the end of the last game. The new characters really filled out the world, and the actors did an amazing job. I never saw Richard Schiff as Odin working, but he won me over. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I felt like the combat system, while not really changing much with the Blades, Axe did add some new wrinkles to it. Interesting, like adding the perks. I enjoyed the drop near spear, how it changed things up. Nothing more fun than loading an enemy up with spear spear tups and seeing them light up. I did like that. That was cool. Yeah. I love doing that. I found myself using it more than the other weapons except for Berserker fights. Was it a perfect game? No. There definitely were moments like this. Like, like there was just too much to do. Pretty sure there were multiple moments during the crater was like more quests. Seriously, the crater was a little much. The crater was a lot. I feel like I might have been the only one that was sad to see the Niflheim maze not make an appearance. <laughs> I didn't do the Niflheim maze in 2018 because I said fucking no. Oh, yeah, that sucked with maze. the poison gas? Fuck that. Yeah, I fucked that up too. I didn't do that shit. I didn't either. do that shit. That shit was tough. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> that was like one of the trophies. Tedious. Oh, my God. Uh, at least the Ravens were easier to find this go around. The newer Muslim trials were a better variety. The Berserker fights were fun for the most part. But then there were a few that were just lessons and punishments where I just need to put them down and come back later. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can stress just how perfectly cast this game was. Though it reminded me of the drunkard that always wants to fight from Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. Now as for the big change, I really enjoyed the times I got to play as Loki. His fighting style is different enough from Kratos to keep things fresh. And it was great to see him grow on his own. Mm -hmm. I look forward to hopefully play more as him on the quest to bring the Giants back. And one last thought. That climactic siege of Asgard was probably my favorite part of the game. It felt truly epic, as it should have been. Uh, my favorite part was when it was hinted that Mimir gave oral sex to a Valkyrie queen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what we were all thinking. I mean, that's what I was, that's that's what I was thinking. That's, a, that's all uh, I can do. I mean, what else? Uh, a horn? <laughs> we sounded a galler horn. Kelly Heimdall was up there. Yeah, uh, that was good. Thanks for your thoughts, though, Ryan. Uh, yeah. I think I agree with most of them. Yeah. 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 If anything, though, you didn't say that Papa Odin was Papa enough. <laughs> and God, he's fucking good. I liked yeah. I liked Odin a lot. I really do. I just I think the the story between the two 2018 and Ragnarok here it was just it was. It was awesome. I know, a light, like a lot, of, like you mentioned, a lot of the beginning of the game was kind of repeating what was going on from 2018. But man, I was still so fucking into it. Oh my god! Yeah, it's uh, it's not very often that a game like you get that big release where you know, like this is all I'm gonna want to do all day. Yeah, and like you're at work and you're thinking about going home and playing, and then you get home and play, and you're like, I need to go to bed because I have to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But you keep playing. It's uh, one I, of those games. I played at like 6.15 in the morning for like a half an hour before work sometimes. My my wife is finishing or playing it right now, and I'm, I'm sure she's still awake doing it right now too because we actually switch off on nights now. Like uh, like uh, yesterday was her game. That's of, fucking winning as a couple right It's, it's great. So like Monday was my night, and then <laughs> yesterday, that's when we confirmed that we we're going to do this, so it was still her night, so she's doing it an extra night tonight. I get tomorrow night. Uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah no she's doing it right now and i could she's been staying up later and later and there was one time we got up before the babies got up um because they're like, that's what you can <laughs> that's <laughs> we uh because their wake up time is 6 30 and my wife usually wakes up a little bit before six so then she went downstairs and all of a sudden i just saw like her talking to heimdall i'm like okay all right well not the cool. best morning but <laughs> not the not cool. i'm like if you want to do that you go ahead <laughs> yeah but yeah it's this game is it is definitely that. Want to play yeah. it. I really look forward to these releases. 
Uh, I thought Hogwarts Legacy was going to scratch that itch, and it did for the most part, but like this is a bigger title than that. I think yeah. the last time I was this excited about a game was The Last of Us Part Two, okay. and I don't really see a game on the horizon other than maybe Death Stranding 2 that's going to give me the same level of hype. 80s 2. Oh, that's right, 80s 2. Uh, I, I will say this game was not what I thought it was going to be because God of War 2018 I was very, very high on. And this game vastly exceeded and improved in some ways. And I think it felt a little stagnant and possibly underdeveloped in other ways. I it's I don't know. The combat had a lot to it. And I just felt like there was sometimes too much to it. And it wasn't, wasn't explained enough. And overall, I thought it balanced itself pretty well with what it was accomplishing. Is it my favorite game of all time? No. Is it an absolutely fucking awesome game? Yes. It was. I, I thought I, I really enjoyed my time with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was my game of the year when we did the wrap up, and I I wavered a little bit once I jumped back into Elden Ring for some of the Elden <clears throat> Dog casts we were doing. Yeah. But like, I would probably put my stamp on this game as definitely my game of the year last year. I'm excited for you to actually beat the game and beat Gana and beat King Rolf because right now you haven't done shit. <laughs> yeah, I just beat the st- I beat the story and I did a That's handful it. of side shit, but I really enjoyed it. You knocked Odin's hat off his head, and Sindri did the work for you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> That's essentially what I did. Yeah, I dude, Sindri when he just pops in there, he's like, no, and I was like, <laughs> whoa, dude, no, it was so good. Yeah, I'm not touching this game again though until New Game Plus comes out because I am not. I don't think I have the heart to start over just yet. I mean, I only beat it four or five months ago. God. So we have a, a weird situation right now where we're going to rank this game on our game rankings. So the way oh this boy. works, okay. if you haven't played the game we're ranking it against, you just abstain. So we'll go right in the middle here. Uh, God of War twenty or God of War Ragnarok or Donkey Kong Country 2? Oh, wow. I Sorry to do this to you, Ben. God of War. It's, I mean, it's still God of War, but man, what a heavy hitter right away. That's right in the middle of the ranking. Oh, boy. Um, I love Donkey Kong Country too. I just replayed that one too recently. Uh, I am gonna go God of War Ragnarok, hesitantly, just for its story beats. I'm not. I'm not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts? Man, I love Donkey Kong Country too. It's the best of the original trilogy. It is. It's the best Donkey Kong Country game possibly. Yeah. Fun fact, the guy who did the music for that is writing us a new theme song for our podcast. Really? David Wise. Fuck yeah, dude. That's sick. It's very exciting. We got we party with him. Nice. He was here last time. Yeah. Oh my god, that's that so cool. <laughs> I just think about like how that, that music while you're like going to different levels in Donkey Kong Country 2, like din 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 din. Like that's he does. All right. This game is about monkeys on an island. And he's like, I right, don't say make less. it slap so hard. Say less. <laughs> no, nah, it's still it's still gotta work right So it's, on, it's an underwater level, you're saying? Okay. <laughs> Oh, God, that's so beautiful. All right. Dark Hunt Country 2 or Ragnarok? It's Ragnarok. Okay. Um, Donkey, or God of War Ragnarok or Mega Man X? Haven't played. Haven't played. <laughs> this is too much pressure now. Um, Mega Man X. Um, Ooh. God of War Ragnarok or... Final Fantasy VII, PS1. Haven't played. I only played the remaster. God of War, Ragnarok, or Doom 2016? Oh my God, I haven't played. God I'm War. very bad at this. I'd go Doom 2016 over Ragnarok. Doom 2016 is a fucking banger, dude. That soundtrack alone is better than any okay, game. Yeah, was... but I liked God of War more. That one, our best soundtrack for the PS4. Yeah, that did, yeah. Yeah. I uh, played part of it, then I got too sick because the, the camera was way too fast. God of War Ragnarok or Doom 2016? Okay. One, two, three, and shoot, call it out, okay? Yep. One, One two, two, three, three rock. Scissors. Yeah. Okay. So then God of War wins? Yeah. Wins? Okay. Yep. So God of War is number 18. Wow. On our list. Oh, no, number 19, I should say. Under Final Fantasy VII PS1. Damn. Okay. And it's number one. Bloodborne. Okay. <laughs> Bloodborne. Um,. It goes Bloodborne, Kentucky Route Zero, Death Stranding, Hades, What Remains of Edith Finch, Pokemon Red Slash Blue, mm. and on and on to number 41, which is our last one, 
which is Kingdom Hearts one, <laughs> <laughs> which I I'll, I'll bat for it. What's a uh, Super Mario sixty four on there? Not yet. Okay. We only games we've had a podcast about it. Oh, okay. Put All on right. the ranking, but this has been Raw Dogs. Thank All you right. so much, Ben, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking. Oh my god, I'm so into this right now. It's so good. So the reason we had you on is because the moment I finished, I went on Facebook and you just posted God of War exclamation point. Yep. <laughs> No, no, no. All I said was God of War. Yeah. All I said, no exclamation point, just says God of War. And I put like the, a Kratos gif, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. It was him doing the, like the, like the shimmy and yeah, yeah. Exactly. The shimmy. <laughs> um, you're, you're not currently podcasting or anything. Do you have anything no. you want people to check out? Uh, uh, if you right, do. I mean, I appreciate it. Right now, I mean, I'm working at Radio Milwaukee. Uh, I, I switched jobs, so now I'm over there. Uh, listen to Radio Milwaukee. Listen to local music. Uh, even if you're not from Milwaukee, then listen to local music from your area. Just do it. It's it's you can find some diamonds in the rough there. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are Hair of the Dogcast. Yes, if you want to reach out to us on Instagram, Hair of the Dogcast, Twitter at Hot Dogcast, email us at Hair of the Dogcast at gmail dot com. Thank you to executive producers Ryan Christianick, Kip Kip Kipper, Brian Ward, Jordan Ho- Jordan Hoff, and Phil Wright. Thank you so much for jumping up to the executive producer tier. We are a proud member of the Tokyo Beat Podcast Network. Check out all those other amazing shows. And just don't be sorry. (laughs) Be better. (laughs) Close your heart to it. (laughs) If you have a head that wants to go spend the night at a Valkyrie's house, you let them. You let them, dude. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Come on, brother. Let me go. Also, before we go, that one, that awesome line that we had where it's just like, you really come around, brother. And he's like, well, I had some good counsel, brother, after you kill King Haralf. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. No, it's it's it's, it's all right. It's Damn. great, because even Kratos mentions that he considers Mimir like somewhat of a brother. Yeah. I was like, dude, this you don't brother. even have friends. No. This <laughs> is going to make me cry, and it's just you guys recounting it. <laughs> it's not even Well, crazy. and yeah, a lot of the dialogue about the Berserkers, Mimir is, actually tells a story, because he's yeah. the one who like, helped all of that. Whatever the fuck happened. At some point, my brain rolls back into its head and says, no more lore today, Bradley. <laughs> That's enough. Uh, Mimir is from Midsummer's Night Dream. Fuck if I know what that means. <laughs> All right, he's a head on a stick. He was on a mountain for 109 years. Whatever. <laughs> but, cool. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say. I'm excited for God of War. Whatever's next. Uh, Giza. Yeah. God of War, Boston, Lion Massachusetts. Calendar. Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> what do you think this is over here? That's New York. The Fenway yeah. Park DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This is like your your main mission is to kill Tom Brady. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Loki, where'd you pack your car? Dude, Tom, <laughs> no, Tom Brady is like actually the ultimate boss. It's the ult. That's it. Yeah, or maybe maybe he is the... He is Boston, he's like he, he, he is like Odin of Boston. Yeah. 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 He's like... Uh, you want to be my wife, Giselle? You mean no. my ex-wife? Ex-wife. I got a cat. <laughs> you did know about true. the cat. That's All right. Like Thanks you. for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs>